Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MNMH Music and Mental Health with me, Ryan, and obviously Mark. Uh, today we are pleasured. Is that the wrong word? We'll not go that far to say the least. Today I'm pleasuring these two. <laughs> I'm moving the chair slightly more to the right. <laughs> we are extremely happy to be joined with Harry himself. Yeah, round of applause. Thank so I'm going to open much. a drink and we'll have a little quick toast we'll before. We'll have a toast. We'll have a toast. We'll have a toast. We had a shot of a is it Des- no. Di Serrano last it was yesterday? Amaretto, wasn't it? Yeah, awful. Can't mate. afford Di Serrano. They got a um, amaretto. They got a new white one out, and they new like um, it's like a liquor. You joking? Oh. It looks interesting. I Same sickly. I might though. have to give it a go, but like honestly, it does sound sickly. Yeah. It looks sickly as well. So you been? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Um. I've literally just been trying to, in in a midst of all this shite going on in the, the world, chaos, yeah, 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 chaos. Yeah. I'm trying, you know, to, to to persevere through it as everyone else is. You know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, that's the shit thing about it, isn't it? Like, I mean, we can't fucking gig. Obviously, yeah. last time you haven't gig for a few fucking years. No, I've been gig for for ages. I, before, first of all, before COVID, I was trying. I was focused on trying to get like a, a like a, a good set together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, of like new songs and that, and then. Obviously, look, since last year, we've been wiped out of the game, haven't we? Well, we have, yeah. So, so you'll explain it better. Like, I'd kind of put your your music under that sort of like American sort of almost like mumble rap sort of. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you'd kind of describe it as? I mean, I wouldn't, but that's only because, like, for example, like I have a lot of friends that listen to like mumble rap and yeah. like American yeah. like music as such, and like, is it like? It's very different because it's extremely mumbled or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah, accent yeah. influences that. Yeah, Whereas yeah. with like my music, it's like, it's definitely got the, it's definitely more influenced by American artists. Yeah. But I do try and keep true to UK soil. Do you know what I mean? Because I'd because imagine that like, because of how big that genre is, I didn't, like, I'm out of this sort of yeah. e- like area of expertise. So I, I really am just guessing, but I imagine there's a, couple, like, a fair few UK artists. Yeah taking influence from that sound now and kind oh, of yeah, doing that spin on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I find I find <clears> mainly and like the reason one of the reasons like that I'm kind of more enticed to the genre that, that I make and like perform is mm. is more purely based because a lot of people are influenced by for example, do you know D Block Europe and that? Okay. Like, I don't like know, you probably like, yeah, yeah, you would have yeah. you would have heard of them but you might not yeah, you might not yeah, be yeah, aware of, of them as such. But like for example, they've been on the scene now for like two, three years, and um, well, longer than that. But I mean, that's when they kind of like really blew. And in the last two to three years, I mean, the majority of people like I know, yeah, like mates that I've had or anything, a lot of them like were inspired to do music or wanted to do music based off like artists like D Block Europe yeah, and stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Whereas for me, it's like it was always. A lot more deeper than that. Like, if you think before D Block was it, but even around and anything like that. Yeah. I mean, like back in college, like we literally yeah. listened to like pretty much everything, wouldn't we? And like we'd yeah. play like whether it was like rock music or like pop music or well, we, acoustic. Or, we became friends over the nineteen seventy five. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah. Like the nineteen seventy five. And I mean, like I, I even used, used to listen to like a, a lot of like Ed Sheeran and like Ben yeah. Howard and stuff. Yeah, that was like, my big, that was my biggest influence. Exactly. Like, so and when like, you talk about putting a set list together, obviously you haven't had the chance to because obviously everything's going on. Um, is there a gigging scene for it? Have you got to try and almost carve your own and maybe go independent and book your own shows? Or yeah, is there an underground thing where you could maybe get on the sports slot for something in Manchester? Or mm. Do you know if there's that sort of market yet? Or it's, it's, it's difficult because I've tried to reach out a few times to different different people, different mm. um, like management teams, etc. And I, I, I do struggle because yeah. like obviously it's, it's that type of music that you can you can listen to and you hear it a lot, you know yeah. what I mean? But you don't necessarily see it performed much like locally yeah, yeah. or anything. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like you that's the kind of music you just see, suddenly see like on a stage, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you yeah. think, Well, how how have you even got there? You see the cues that's all like Birmingham O to Institute or something. Thing. And you yeah. go, Who's that for? And someone I mentioned now ago, I've never heard yeah, of yeah. Because like, we'll be in the fourth room one. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear like absolute carnage in the main room. You go, Well they're obviously doing something right, but again yeah. you never see the before level no. deer well, in when I suppose. We O2 Institute with you, I think it was. Yeah. Dave was in the main room. Yeah. yeah. I know Dave's obviously grime, but, yeah, and, but yeah. again, it, you know what like, I mean? People are going to see that sort of level of yeah. artist. 100%. And like, I mean, XXX before he died, mm. I mean, he was massive. 
Yeah, like he was yeah. on that level where it was ridiculous, and yeah. he, he was brilliant at what he did. Yeah, I think it's it's with people like that as well. And like my inspiration comes more for art from artists like that, simply because like it's I find that they like I can relate to it because like for example like X and stuff like there was there was trouble like as like a teenager and stuff. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they yeah. all they all speak about. Like relatable things, whether that's like like drug use or whether that's heartbreak. Or whether he had the like... documentary on Netflix, didn't he? No, that was Travis Scott. No, yeah. there's another one. I think I think I think it's the got, XXX got... Tension guy. Tension. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but I, I, I swear, I swear, I've watched his Netflix thing, and it's all about him being part of the. Um, is it Goth Boy League? Oh no, that's Lil Peep. You know that's Lil oh yeah, it's a Lil yeah, Peep yeah. one. Sorry, Lil Peep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a there is <laughs> a documentary. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a documentary on Little Peep. That's called brilliant. Everybody's everything. Yeah, yeah. It's very and that's good. really good because you get a good insight onto like it's a good insight not only on like obviously like his rise to like he's like yeah, fame yeah. as such, but people like invested in him and like bought into like the music because like it's like heavily heavily relatable. Yeah. But like even though it was like. You can listen to a lot of the music and it was it's like deep, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and even on the surface, if it doesn't like, you wouldn't think it. The beat might not sound deep, but then like the lyrics suddenly yeah, like, yeah. hit you. And I find the same with like like you said like with X and um mm. and like uh, like obviously I've listened to like a lot of, like Juice World and stuff. And before he passed away, obviously I've listened to a load of his like songs and like, obviously he died of like overdose of like mm. you know Percocets like painkillers and um. And in in his music, like he often talks about how like he knows that he's gonna die because of yeah. them. You know what I mean? And I think like in that sense, like you got to be very careful because you almost pave your own future. Yeah, like you it's, know what I mean. Your own like destiny. Force, yeah. But it's it's no it's, it's no different to the mystique that kind of surrounded rock and roll. 100%. Like it's no different to that. So the kids that were aspiring to be Hendrix and were aspiring to be Jim Morrison. Yeah. They kind of fell victim when they were making music in the eighty eight and later on down the yeah. line. And obviously, the same with the grunge era as well. It's no different, really, I suppose, to what, what your music is now. Obviously, people like will flippantly call it the new rock and roll. And yeah. It's not. It's obviously not for the music, but it's because of the culture that's kind of getting embedded it's in the scene. Culture. Yeah, it's got the same culture, it, 100% as the artists. They're kind of like, the actions are pretty similar, do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, you've definitely got this kind of like, almost like rebellious, like yeah, yeah, forward image. And then behind it, you've always, you've got these layers of like, of like, like drug abuse and like depression and like yeah. you know it's all linked self- it's, it's, it's almost people cope in the wrong way but in turn it's it's probably made the genre so much bigger than it maybe ever could have been without all these fatalities it's, that have kind of come with it as much as a, it's an image as much as a genre though isn't it because mm. yeah. they dress very similarly they yeah. all I mean face tattoos are massive yeah. aren't they yeah, they're ne- you've like, got a couple they never used to be like like there would never be a thing do you know what I mean and like no, so no. many people were like well, they were a thing, but like so many people were like, were "Don't get a face tattoo because yeah, yeah. you won't be accepted then, or you won't get a job and stuff." And I think yeah. with a lot of these artists and stuff, that's why people did it, wasn't they, it? They did he... it in, intentionially. They don't. They didn't want an, a nine to five, and they don't want to no, kind no. of be in. That's. I oh, saw the beauty in that documentary because it was a group of lads, and obviously the group was around eight, ten people, and yeah. obviously they got hangers on as well, and it was just. They're in that flat, in, flat, flat. There was in that flat in Skid Row, and it <laughs> yeah, was yeah. it was very much so. You could tell that they were making the music for the love. They weren't phoning it in to be these mega rich superstars. They, yeah. were, they were doing it because they all had problems. They'd all come from maybe weird, broken families. Yeah, exactly. Yes, they were subsidising it with substances, but that's almost where you can kind of hear the beauty in some of their lyrics because yeah. it definitely come from a different place. Yeah. Like, I suppose we'll kind of end up back into this because it's kind of where you're at now in terms of your music career, but. Can you tell us about like your earliest instances of music? Like, what was your first thing where you went, I fall in love with a song, or you decided you wanted to do it? Whether obviously on on you when you played guitar and did that gig at the Sunflower Lounge. Yeah. Like, tell me about your earliest experiences. <clears throat> so, I genuinely like the first, the first time I, f- I, th- I ever kind of like, well, going to and from school. Like when I was younger, mm. like we, I remember we had this like. We had this really like shitty like silvery blue like Fiat, and it was like it was horrible. Anyway, <laughs> this, it had a shit stereo and everything. But we used to we used to go to and from like school, yeah, getting dropped off me and my sister in the car and whatever. And um and like my mum always like played different like types of music, and I think like that's when I first ever kind of listened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And paid attention. A lot of the songs she'd play, 
and I will I was like yeah mum I don't know this oh mum mum you yeah, don't yeah. listen to this you know what I mean yeah. and I'd be like mum put like Maroon Five on it, you know, <laughs> any, and you was the cool kid like yeah, yeah, the iPhone <laughs> literally anything like anything that like I could I thought you know oh mum put this on but after so long I mean. My mum sang everything around me, whether it was like ACDC, yeah. Alice Cooper, um, it could... We be, bonded over that the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Slipped into my DMs day, the naughty little chaffinch. She used to smash out Michael Jackson like, all the time. And like, I think the first time I ever kind of like, was really kind of like, into the idea of like, music is like, yeah. I remember my mum playing like, Michael Jackson, Bad Album. Yeah. <clears throat> and then... There was like a lot of like sounds in it yeah. that like I thought was like it was like so cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I felt like that. I felt at that point like I wanted I wanted to like learn instruments and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to. I really wanted to kind of like grasp that kind of like concept with music. Yeah. Because I watched end up watching loads of videos of like Michael Jackson and blah blah blah. I'm watching like all these different like documentaries and that <clears throat> and I remember when Nucky died I think it was like 2009 and like that like that kind of like gutted me because like I'd never got to go and see him do you know what yeah, I mean and yeah. my mum had got to see him at Wembley yeah, yeah. when she was younger and I was like you're lucky you are you're lucky yeah, yeah. and um, I always said like I, I wish I'd got the opportunity to, to go and see him and because um, he was a great performer do you know what I mean yeah, and yeah. I think above everything like like his vocal range and stuff like that just like blew me out the water yeah. but then my mum would also put on like female artists and like like the softness of their voice and yeah. like the pitch changes and stuff like I, I, I fell in love with that yeah. like do you know what I mean I thought like wow like and not hearing like men do as much like higher kind yeah, of like yeah. pitch singing See, yeah, and that, stuff that kind of explains where your vocal ability comes from there yeah I've, I've never, never really sang, known like, that songs yeah yeah but I've, again songs that more you've always had quite a high range you've yeah. always sat in that higher range but I never knew that was kind of where it came from. Yeah. But it explains it because yeah. Michael Jackson, obviously, his yeah. range was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His melodies ridiculous. Same as your melody writing in your tracks. They're mint. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. been, like we've been in the studio. I've watched you drop on a track and the melodies bang on first on. Like yeah, I and can that can even come from being a kid in your mom's car, like hearing melodies is, yeah. from like pop music and stuff. Like even though it's obviously something that you don't, you 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 won't class as what you do now, but. There's a, there's there's a lot of melodic content in what you're doing. When I saw you at the Sunflower Lounge, it was just you and a, a guitar, like electric yeah. guitar. Like you was you was very soft spoken as you are now, and like your melodies were pretty. And yeah. I saw that and I was like he's a really talented songwriter. And then obviously like, the next time I heard you, like there was obviously more of a grit in like the background and the instrumentals of it, yeah. but mm-hmm. you still had that softness and the subtleness yeah. to your delivery and everything. And yeah. it's great that you've kept that as well because. You know, like, there's a lot of grit in the sort of music that you hear in a so-so, like, your sort yeah. of genre, but, like, you know, you're bringing it from a different element, which, yeah. obviously, your background, I suppose, paints that out, doesn't it? What but, blows my mind is, obviously, because, obviously, you play guitar, and this is, again, a massive, a massive uh, compliment to your melody writing, is that you, you admit, like, you're not... Again, you don't know may, m- loads and loads of chords. Yeah. So like when you write like songs you've sent me, it's been two chords yeah. or three chords, mm. but th- you can hear sections. Yeah, like, yeah. Imagine trying to write like again. We we kind of have to work around chords because we're yeah. predominantly guitarists. I guess. Yeah, yeah. We kind of work around chords, and that's how we kind of build the tracks, and that's how we distinguish a pre-chorus and a chorus. Mm. Yeah. But you've sent me songs with two chords yeah. and they're literally the same two chords over and over yeah. but it sounds like a song yeah, yeah it's, it, it's <coughs> almost like it's, it's creativity it, and limitation yeah it is because it's, yeah. it's it's only a simple amount of, it's a few limited number of chords but like with that I find that you hit the nail on the head really when you said that it, it's simple but you can hear a song throughout it and I mean, you know my love for the 1975. Oh, yeah. You can, like, I remember uh, watching an interview once with, like, Matt Healy, and he said that um, it's not it's not about, like, having, like, a big fancy, like, you know, song with, like, loads of chords and loads of, like, riffs and stuff. Like, there's many songs that have been written with, like, the same, like, four chords, yeah. and they've absolutely banged differently, do you know what I mean? 100%. And, like, I, 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 I've used probably the same, like, th- three chords in, like, three different yeah. songs four different songs <clears> you know yeah, what I mean yeah. but like changing the order of them and changing like the melody and everything like it even changing way, the drum it, sound it, and it, the tempo yeah, slightly it, it falls 
it fools everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Like that, it's almost like a completely different idea. Yeah, do you know what I mean? 100%. But really, like, yeah, it's because there's certain chords which aren't like, like you said, like I think sound, they sound like pretty. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're like shimmery. They're like very like glittery and stuff. Like in the yeah. way that they sound, it's very like, you know, it's that, and it's that sound that like I, most of the time I've often tried to capture. Yeah. I mean, I've always kind of like tried to capture that more like soft sound. I've noticed it's like college and yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. We used to do covers of um of songs that were you know just pretty much a lot of the time we're like not even like in my comfort zone as such but yeah. like you you find your feet with it do you know what I mean and yeah. and, and I think that's, that helped me learn a lot that mm. did especially back in college because there was a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have been singing yeah. that I ended up <clears throat> taking on and trying to sing and like we we Often we found a way to make it into our own yeah, versions. Of course, I mean, we were like, forced to cover all kinds, didn't we? Yeah, we had to cover uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers. Okay, Stevie Wonder, didn't we? And yeah. It was all part of college, yeah. but we'd Gary always Newman. find a way to make yeah. it. Yeah. Gary Newman. Yeah. Gary Newman. Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then, even when you did the cover of uh, Blue Pill, <clears throat> yeah, again, it's quite a strong track. Yeah, if you listen to the track, you couldn't. You couldn't visualise that acoustic. No, no, but you stripped it back. I think it was just your strat, wasn't it? Yeah. Just your strat and your vocal. Mm -hmm. And stripped it back and it was as interesting as Three anything calls. else. Literally. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah, of course. Like, it's a it's a massive it's a massive compliment with your melody writing. It's not ridiculous. Yeah. Thank you. But harping back to your mom, um would you would you say that the relationship with your mom has kind of spurred you forward? Because obviously I know I know you get on with your mom yeah. and you've obviously loved your mom for years and years and she's wonderful woman yeah I mean she's definitely she's definitely encouraged me I'd say she's more encouraged me with she doesn't I don't think she realises how she's encouraged me in a lot of ways because yeah. there's times where I've said I want to be a musician and stuff or do music and like they always give you that look sometimes you know what I mean like, like, like <laughs> yeah. she's a she's a great woman supportive yeah. to the max I've never had support like it but but I remember first telling her that like I wanted to solely focus on music as like a career yeah. and they obviously she come, she came to me with the question of like you know do you not think that's like hard to do and like you know do you think you'll be able to do it and, and, like, and I thought they like, judge yeah, because they care don't they yeah, like yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 they ask you these questions because they don't know that the answer is going to be great really yeah. but obviously they they, they I, I've I've been tried to be talked into doing like trades go to uni and do this mm. and the other and like Honestly, like there's times where I felt like maybe maybe I just should. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But that's not that's not true to myself. Yeah, I of do course. so. <clears throat> it's it's taking like a passion and then pushing it aside for something that like might make money. But yeah. like, so what? You know what I mean? Like money, like yeah, you need money. But like at the same time, you can make money. Yeah, like at any point in your life, yeah. you can't remake time. So like, yeah. if you get to a certain age and you realise you actually spent all these years like what plumbing and stuff and yeah. like you actually wanted <laughs> yeah, to yeah. make music <clears throat> and you make banging <clears throat> songs you can write songs and stuff then like why waste it do you know what I mean oh. and like I said like she, um, she her, like she influenced me massively f just through the fact that like she's like so strong and like so um, determined do you know what I mean yeah. when she wants to do something and like yeah. she doesn't even realise that like that rubbed off on me yeah. do you know what I mean I think the thing that um, I think when people go oh, like, I want to be a musician when, when you think about making a living in music so that's you know being a session musician or being like an MD or something like you've got to have a level of technical expertise don't you so yeah. I think the judgement comes because they go well I know he's not talented in that way yeah. so like is he really going to be able to make a career out of it but I think the difference is he's you know artists like if you, if you hold back to like Kurt Cobain like he changed a generation with four chords and lyrics that were sang with passion yeah and that doesn't come from the talented uber technical guitar players that no, comes no, no. from the people that may have a few flaws as people but yeah. they can capture an essence capture a vibe and portray it with all their emotion yeah, and that's the difference between an artist and I think and, and a good musician Like, and you can have both Like, yeah, there's sure. definitely people like Prince and stuff that are artists but they're great at what great they do musicians, but yeah. again I don't I don't think when people go oh but he's not he couldn't win X Factor with that voice. Like, yeah. you don't need to. Like, no, no, you, you need to have a great voice to win X Factor. But there's better artists and more successful with longer careers sure, sure. Yeah. who would never even get past the first round. Like Neil Young. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's another element as well. But like, again, talking about your limitations, like with chords and with guitars, then 
to me that makes you shift into that artist category where mm. if you can still capture people with two chords and a nice melody yeah. and the way you deliver it and what you're singing about or talking about like then for me then that that puts you in that category and then yeah. that they're the people I rate more highly like not the people that can out shred someone but the people that can yeah. really capture something special in a performance like I mean I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I, I don't often like look at like guitarists and think I'd love to be able to shred you know yeah, what I mean yeah, of and I've and it's a shame really because I've never like I've never well, I do sell guitar lessons, Harry, at 15 pounds. <laughs> 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 I'm going to take your order. You can move that mic, you need it, man. Shed, yeah. A, yeah. Shed a few chords. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but you know, you made a really good point about the whole... Um, uh, you, like, you picked a great example with Kirk Cobain because I, like, that's... It's so true that that bloke took simple chords yeah. and sounds and stuff, yeah, and, like, power chords, whatever, and, like, he, like... His melodies almost seemed at times a bit childish. Yeah, and like yeah. childish and like random in the yeah, sense yeah. of like, where has that come from and yeah. why have you chosen it to be like that? But then you listen closely to the lyrics and your stuff, and you think you you, you have immediate pre- appreciation yeah. for the fact that like that guy was obviously a troubled guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And whatever it was that's troubled him throughout his life and various reasons, whatever that would have added up to it, like it it formed him in the end to, yeah. to, to spew out this kind of like passion and this like truth and like you said I think yeah, I think you, you separate those kind of artists from other artists because like you, you feel something so yeah. like real and natural I think what I have found to be fair is if I went and saw four artists in the same band they'd be an awful band like it's same you know when you watch the Libertines live like yeah. Pete Doherty and Cole Barrett the guitar parts can be all over the place at times. They're not really singing properly, yeah. but because the rhythm section's superb, that's the reason people are still dancing. Yeah. When you talk about maybe Kurt Cobain not necessarily having great performances at times, but mm. because he's got Dave Grohl behind him and he's yeah. got Chris Novoselic just holding it down, yeah. you know, I think there's that give and take, but I think that's yeah. why some people are meant to be maybe the guys at the back and then yeah. there's the people with the issues maybe at the front, yeah. but they're the ones that can actually put something so beautifully in four words mm. where it would take some people a book to portray the same message yeah. like it often takes an artist's like downfall on a personal level mm-hmm. t- for them to produce like the best music do you know what I mean yeah. and I think sometimes it's only when artists have that downfall that other people start to appreciate them and in yeah. a way it's like it's a bit of a sweet thing because like they shouldn't have to go to the downfall no. just to be yeah. noticed but you kind of you know exactly what I mean, don't you? Because yeah, like, yeah, you see those artists and you, immediately you're drawn to them because you you know that they've been through some shit. You but know that like they've got there. I think that's why Amy Winehouse is such a cult figure now. Like, bear in mind, like when she was popular, like there's even people like Lily Allen and like um, Buff, Duffy, like yeah, yeah, Buffy, yeah, Duffy. Like, Buffy, Duffy, Duffy, like <laughs> you know, like <laughs> D- Duffy's voice. Like yeah. I remember she did a Dusty Springfield cover, and her voice was just as great as. It's probably better than Amy Winehouse has ever sounded, but maybe when it comes to like uh, Gabriella Chilmy as well, like her voice is incredible. But you got to think yeah, mate, Gabriella I love Gabriella Chilmy, mate. Like, like if she ever comes on the podcast, like I'll fly to Australia to interview her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I put love. <laughs> but like the thing is, is like when, the fact that like Amy Winehouse's lyrics were about you know like a fella drinking too much Carly and, and maybe throwing something at her. Mm. The same thing is about a conversation we're going to rehab and stuff, like, mm. even though it was almost a joke at the time. Because it almost come from such an older soul that had maybe seen more things than the other, like, female singers had seen. Like, yeah. there's a reason that people related to it a lot more. Yeah. And the reason that, like, if she was still going now, like, I know people are getting tired of, like, some of the sloppy performances towards the end, but she'd still be a household name now where mm. the others have kind of slipped off the radar but, because maybe it was yeah. just that fleeting moment where she was timeless but like what, what same with Janis Joplin and would she have that platform <clears throat> if she was still alive I know what you mean because I, I was literally just thinking mm. that I was thinking sometimes it takes a person's yeah. death before mm. they well, really Juice cemented cult, you know what Ju- I mean? well Juice World is a, and XX and P They've now been yeah. cemented. Yeah, yeah. As mate, like, they're, they're cult icons. Yeah, yeah. The only they, person you could compare it. her to, really, was she was in the paper probably just as much as Pete Doherty was at the same time. Well, they knew yeah. each other. Obviously, yeah. Pete Doherty's now celebrating his 40th birthday, and he never thought he'd probably make it, but he he, he can still play Reading Festival, and he can still sell out academies. Of course he can. But she's 
you know, she's, she's told she's she's on the voice of the last century, like, yeah. and people will put her in the bracket with the greats because of, yeah. maybe because of everything that happened and yeah. the downfall, like, where if you can get through it, maybe you do kind of taper off because you're not in the papers anymore, maybe it is a thing, like. So with, like, obviously, we're talking about, obviously, like, um, drug use in this sort of genre. Do you think it's something that is critical to it now? Or do you believe it's something that will eventually pass over and it's a bit of a... I can't say like a fad, but you know what I mean. Like you maybe it, need a great musician to come from the genre that he's doesn't cool. associate with it and maybe goes, oh, I've, I've never done that, but I still sing about the same things. And yeah. You maybe need someone like that to almost kind of refresh the mindset of the yeah. genre to maybe make it really mainstream, especially in the UK, because... Hmm. Grimes kind of done that sort of branch over, but yeah. a lot of the people that have been able to do the crossover are the cleaner cut of the ones, aren't they? Like, of course they are. You know, Storms. Yeah, like, like Storms, you could meet your mum or nan, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd, they'd, they'd have a great time. Like, yeah. maybe the ones that come from maybe, maybe dark, not like, alone. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but maybe the, maybe the ones that have like Potter, sh- Potter. shadier sort of histories, they're the ones that will never make that crossover. But it might take someone to do that crossover in like your obviously yeah. specific type of like music to maybe clear the name of everything that's built up before I don't know yeah I mean I definitely <clears throat> going back to the question that, that you'd put forward about do you think that it like do you think that it's kind of like plays a part is it is it needed and and will it fade out or will it continue I mean I'm hoping it doesn't continue and that's no. because like hopefully after like after seeing Pete die from like drugs and he was what 24 yeah um Pete died Juice died from drugs and like it's these are people that like often spoke about in their lyrics the fact that they they often like sometimes did want to die or didn't think about death you know what I mean which is quite daunting really to think about the fact that like you know that maybe they, they had the world at their feet yeah. and they but you never know whether it was in a self-destructive way do you yeah no I know I, f- I find but then again like saying that I, I do 100% think that like some of like the complete like honesty and like the, the deepness like in my music I know that like some of those have come from out of the darkest places and the darkest mm. corners you know what I mean That's I've it. literally been there like I have been there completely f- fucked yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and it's at that point where like I've wrote something that that was just heart wrenching because yeah. it was it was pain in me to stay inside. You yeah. know what I mean. So the only way to, to get it out is to like put it down on pen and paper and to get it out that way. And in in the long run, I hope I can only hope that like people can relate to that. And like yeah. f- for example, like my a lot of my songs are about taking like drugs and yeah. and stuff. But that's it's kind of like past tension, you know what I mean? Because course, yeah. I, I no longer like take like like any of those things or do any of those well, things. You know could what you mean? feel like, like you know because it's in your in your music? <clears throat> yeah. Do you feel like you're advocating it? Like you know, if, if if you know that there's an eighteen year old or seventeen year old that's listening to your music, going, I really love what he does. Are you not almost? Do you, do you feel like you're there going? Oh, but well, you got to get in this route to make yeah. something as hauntingly beautiful as what I've just done. Or, yeah, I know what you mean. but again, I don't think you can ever put an artist on that pedestal and put that pressure it's, on them. Like, yeah, the reason that people write hauntingly beautiful things is because that there's something in them. Yeah, it's haunting. Yeah, and you know, I suppose the person off the street can hear a look and go, "Oh, that's lovely." Mm. They don't feel it. They go, "Oh, it's lovely." Yeah, like yeah. same way, like, I know it's an awful comment, but like you know, say you won't let go by James Arthur. Yeah. Like, to a pop fan, they go, "Oh, it's a really pretty lyric." When he explained the story on the True Geordie podcast, kind of about like the hangover he had, the like the morning he had to then get in the studio to write it, and then the anxiety he had like the week prior and everything, like yeah. Yeah. you then realise behind it, and the lyrics mean a lot more when you kind of know the story. But mm. I suppose a lot of people don't ever really listen in that sort of great depth either, well, do they? Like, it's a thing of obviously I know your music quite well. Yeah. Like, I don't. Th- I don't think. Like to counter that, yeah. I don't think it's like. Any of your lyrics have ever advocated it. To be fair, you're usually shitting on it. Like, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. usually using it because obviously you've admit, you've you've said yourself you've struggled with it yourself. Yeah, and obviously you pulled yourself through it. Mm. Like I, I knew you when you were at your darkest times, and it, yeah, was, yeah. it was fucking rough. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, so there's there's sometimes people that 
have known me like, over the years, I almost want to erase the image that yeah. they ever had to see me in. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. there was a there was a point where, um, I mean, going back to like the peep thing. Obviously, he died because I, he took Xanax. It was laced with fentanyl. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember this. This would. This was like years ago. Now it's like three and a half years ago, or whatever. But, um, but there was a time where I was that like lonely and felt that shit and stuff. I would be, you know what I mean. I'd be. I'd be. I'd go to my mates or I'd be out with them till yeah. God knows what time. Early hours of the morning, like, and we would just like if we weren't sat there smoking or popping some form of pills yeah. and stuff, you know. I don't know what else we were doing yeah, because yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty much like at one point we were all on that that same like depressive level and so we were all just abusing it but I do strongly believe like you are what you surround yourself with so of if course. you surround yourself with, with negative people and people that are abusing drugs you'll only find yourself in that same position because you, yeah. you're rubbed off thinking of that okay that's how I solve my problems and I'm I consider myself really lucky to have Learned that that's not how to solve my problems. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. The only thing I can I can admit to say that I, I still do now to save my own mentality sometimes before I feel like I'm gonna spiral out mm. and like you know feel like shit. Like is is smoke. Yeah, and yeah. other than that, there's absolutely nothing that I would like I would touch or do because everything else just makes me feel like this. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. It makes you feel so low. And the feeling after is even worse, do you know what I mean? So you think you're bad at the time and then you take these things to relieve you, but you're in the long run you're actually only yeah, making yeah. it worse. And also for the sake of like my friends, like I'm I don't want to sit around sit around my friends doing drugs because like for example, like they deserve better, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. they shouldn't have to watch that and neither should my family or people that I love because that hurts people and seeing them hurt hurts me so you know almost that, like you said that you, you're all in like the same sort of low point mm. you know if it wasn't for you all going out and kind of pushing the boundaries of kind of what you could take and get away with it yeah. would you have not all found ways of maybe like hinder your health maybe fatally you know but something that could have been more sudden so maybe it could have been like suicide or something mm. like could it have gone that's, to that that's realm? A, that's a very because, good point. Because obviously that's something that you can do, and you don't know if your future self would have, would have ever regretted it. Yeah. But you know, like I think it's sometimes easy to like look look at people that are using drugs, especially whether it's creatively, and go, "Oh, they're wasting their talent, or they're wasting their life." But it's almost like a less permanent form of suicide. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the the same side, way with smoking or heavily drinking, like you're, you're taking yourself. from your future self, yeah. but if it gets you through to tomorrow, yeah, then that's, surely that's the you're thing. buying yourself more time. Yeah. Like, so on the flip side, is that actually a good option? For, I know, not a good yeah, option, yeah. but is it the better alternative of your yeah. mental health being that low? Because yeah. obviously you sat with friends, mm-hmm. you're still socialising, you, yeah, yeah. you're taking drugs, but, but you might you be, you might still night, be laughing and having a good time that's taking your mind off the situation for four hours. Could you have that night got to a point where... You took all the much. pills, but in your bedroom, with a bottle of Hennessy or something, and then that is something that's irreversible. Course, like literally, yeah. like, again, it's not it's not a good way to go about it, obviously find help yeah. and do it that way, but does it become the better alternative? Like, I want to throw back to, obviously, the question I just asked you, which was like, do you feel like you're advocating it? Because I in no way believe that that is a thing I just wanted to kind of see your perspective on it, because... Mm. Don't get me wrong. Some people do advocate. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I know personally I that, from from a songwriting point of view. Like, if I've got a lyric about a bottle of whiskey or something, mm-hmm. it, it it might it normally comes at three in the morning, yeah. and I know th- half way yeah, a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it, and it, because it's a lyric that's just come from the situation. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not sat there writing it at nine o'clock on a Monday morning, going, "I'm going to write a lyric about whiskey because that's cool." Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's never comes from that. Yeah. It comes from obviously the experience of being involved being in it involved like in it. so again I only asked you that question just because I wanted to just see you take on it but I, I appreciate that like you would you're obviously not advocating it you're only yeah. writing from experience because yeah, you're not crafting art you're an artist making art like yeah. and I'll stand by that like no like, and it, like it, in answer to that like I'd say for me I think it was the fact that like you are right you are you <laughs> To speak about those things, it comes from being in the position where, like, those things 
know exactly what you're abusing or exactly yeah. what you're doing. So that's the first thing that comes to your mind or springs to your mind. And I mean, if I wouldn't, I would never advise anyone else to like to to do to do those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, but then again, people always make their own choices, like as I did, and as so will everybody else. You know yeah, what I mean? Because that's what people yeah. do; they make their own choices. But um. Unfortunately, you can't stop that. So some people go down the right paths and some go down yeah. the wrong. But with me, I found that like it wasn't so much that I was like listening to music and thinking, oh, do you know, I'm, I'm listening to music about drugs, so I want to do drugs, or, yeah, yeah. or I want to do drugs. It was simply the fact that like I was looking for constantly looking for ways to kind of like numb certain yeah. feelings that I didn't want to feel or block out certain thoughts that I didn't want to think of. And and it helps temporarily, it really does. But like you said, in the in the long run. Um, you are like constantly just pushing yourself down and yeah. down and down, and to, to hold you point, might not get out of any way. Yeah, you might so, just delay to the point where like you you've abused it that much that like you might not get out. And like, like I mean, you already know this because I've spoke to you about it before. But I mean, um, like I took like Xanax like many times, but like the the last time I took Xanax was. I had I ended up having like a seizure from it, okay. and so like what happened was that the Xanax that I'd been like I'd brought and been given was actually cut with fentanyl, the same stuff that the like it obviously yeah. killed Pete. But he took it and like he sat there like popping like six. Demi Lovato's you know I mean? overdose was heroin, heroin laced with fentanyl. As yeah, well. exactly. Like, there's a common thing that fentanyl's the one that will just completely. Yeah, yeah. Take I was lucky as well because I had, like this was like a whole pill. Yeah, I snapped it in half and. Because I was looking at it and I was thinking, like, I saw like a glisten in it, and I was like, I've never seen it's not normal. Like, Xanax yeah. don't glisten, yeah. and I, I remember saying to my mate, I was like, this, these, these don't look right. Like Xanax don't glisten, mm. but like, I felt that low at the time. Like, like I was like, fuck it, I'll, You're not gonna I'll throw pop it away, half. But... You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. gonna throw it away. Like, I'll fucking, I'll pop half of the Xan. I did, and within five minutes, I'd felt split my face open, was like pouring out blood, and. I was on the floor, hospital. The p- people came in an ambulance mm. to put me on one of those like flatbeds, and they were like pressing on my chest. I had I had like wires all attached to like my chest and that. Like they were trying to get me to breathe, and I I was foaming at the mouth, like everything. And like f- for that time, I thought that was it. Okay. I was. I bear in mind that was at my mate's house down the road, doors away yeah. from my mom's house yeah. up the road. You know what I mean? <clears throat> my mom didn't know the whole time until I, obviously I, to, I told her in the end after. But I didn't tell it at the time she would have had a heart attack. <laughs> I suppose but the, like, thing, the thing is as well is obviously you've talked about like you, you what you surround yourself with, but I suppose the issue comes from so <clears throat> I, I I don't know your friends, but I take it they're into the same music as you. So when you say like music doesn't influence the drugs you're taking, yeah. But then if one of your mates has then got into it because of the music he's listening to, I guess it's by part. Then it becomes part of your circle. Yeah. But then at the same time as well, like. <clears throat> There's not really many artists or creatives that aren't doing something like if you're if you go out to the gig in Birmingham, if there's five bands on the bill, like two of them probably are doing drugs before they get on stage. Yeah, like sure. so if that's part of the people that you're almost having to socialise with to help your band and stuff, then the same way that you say you can fall victim, then it's probably the exact same thing of like I wouldn't put that you're surrounding down to the yourself. Genre. Yeah, but that's just a universal thing with me. It's like there's a reason, there's a reoccurring thing with yeah. drugs and artists because you write when you say it's about who you're surrounded by, but the industry is littered. So, yeah. it, you know, I think it takes a, a very strong person to be able to avoid it and still kick on with their career. 100%. In the same way, it doesn't make someone weak if they fall victim to it. It's just they become a victim of circumstance and their own thing. And you don't actually know what's happened leading up to it that's took them down that route either. Do you? Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing that scared me as a friend was obviously you're taking the Xanax that killed Pete. And there's like obviously you do end up getting that pill, and but kind of knew how rough it was for you that that was almost like you say the better alternative. Yeah. Because you were low, like, yeah. and you've it always was... been very open, mm. and we appreciate obviously coming on here and talking about it because there's obviously people out there who are going through the same stuff. Like having that openness about it is the thing that will solve the problem. Yeah, exactly. So having people like you talk about it who've been through the shit, who've tried the alternative and that's been shit. Yeah. To then But there's life after. Like Of course. Yeah, I mean look at you now you like obviously yeah. you've just had rain. 
Yeah, exactly. Like she's like, what? <laughs> she's how old she, now? She's just she's, over a year. She's one and two months, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, obviously, that was like, for me, it's like the biggest turnaround, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. now I have. The purpose. Like, yeah, there was, like you said, like, there was times where, like, you know, I'd do those drugs and stuff to stop me from feeling a certain way, but then, I don't know, it's after having like rain it's like I, I avoid all all of those thoughts and those like negative thoughts I still have negative thoughts because yeah. I'm only human do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, but like those course. thoughts of like feeling like suicide and stuff like I correct myself now like if I get a bad thought in my head like you best believe like I'm going to try and like solve that before I let it yeah, get too, yeah, yeah, too yeah. mean on my own brain and because, again you know you go downstairs and see a kid or something you, you, you're 10 minutes in and yeah. whatever was current in your brain has now it's gone, gone. isn't it? Like, yeah, it's sounds daft, but that's not me and my Labrador. Like, yeah, no, you know, no, like, no, but it's, definitely. Yeah. Everybody has a relationship with, yeah, with even someone the cat. or something. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, look, we've just nearly lost, like, let's explain. <laughs> the cat just went missing, went behind the settee. We couldn't find him. And he's but he, no, no, he's, he's, we thought We thought he'd got out, <laughs> we all, we thought he'd been trapped we somewhere and couldn't get free. We like, thought it was worse. But even something like that, you find yourself. Because obviously you spend a lot of time in the flat on your own, don't you? So course, to yeah. have the cats, like... A company. It, it's very easy to feel in a box sometimes, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Even if the room's a decent size like this is, it can still get small pretty quickly, can't yeah. it? Like, But it's like, again, it's having that... S- when you do get those mental thoughts. Like, even, yeah. even if I end up getting a bad thought, which everyone does, hmm. something stupid like will go through my head, like, well, who's going to feed the cats? Yeah. Yeah. Like you do though, don't you? Or no, you'll watch, true. you'll watch exactly. Benji chase Bono. That's exactly yeah. what happened. And you'll, you'll giggle, it's it's you'll, you'll giggle because yeah. Bono's fallen over and stacked himself to his fat. He, oh, and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then you know you're looking at him and go, <laughs> and then go, oh yeah, was well, like right song, whatever. Like but you know, you do like that, don't you? Like that. It's, it's no almost matter, like a, a quick reset, isn't no it? No matter what yeah. that trigger is, it's yeah. flipping goldfish for some people. Yeah, genuinely. I mean, probably some weird ass people. I read, uh, mate, I read, I read an article. There was a guy who paid for his goldfish to have a tumor removed off his head. No, like forty-four. It was a forty-five-minute thing. He was apparently they were quite fond of it. But it cost more than the goldfish. <laughs> yeah. so mate, the that. things that used to blow my mind. My, my nan and granddad have a fish tank. Don't even know if there's any fish in there, but they've still got the tank and still water. <laughs> it's just yeah, water. The, bro, I, I ain't seen the fish in there for about fifteen years. I don't think they even know. Like, but like, are they gone? <laughs> bro, like, I used to genuinely. I used to get mesmerised because you'd watch this big fish have a poo. And but like, off, yeah. because of like, I don't know, I don't know if gravity's in water, but like, because of the way like it mould with the water, like you just stay a string, yeah. and you'd watch it like it may be hypnotising. Like, I spent many, I spent, I spent many a time as an eight year old watching a fish shit, like, and I'll happily admit it. Like. <laughs> You know what? It's funny to say that. Like, I used to look at, I used to see my goldfish in the tank, yeah, and like, <laughs> he'd have like the string of shit, and, I'd just, and I'd just be, I'd look at him, I'd be like, man. I'd be like, shit, like, imagine swimming yeah, around. Question, with a, with a, like, do they walk their ass? That's the thing, you know. No. I mean? like, they can't walk their ass. They're gonna use its fin like yeah, cats wrap a bit of hand. Their ass. Dogs don't. Of course they do. They drag their ass along the grass. That's them wiping their ass. Does the fish come to the bottom and drag himself along the rocks? I don't think so. You don't know about things like that, do you? Look. It's pretty crazy. Do you reckon they wrap a bit of Andrix around their feet? <laughs> <laughs> I think with that, we'll go to a break. Yeah, we'll go to a little break. We'll have a quick break. We'll be back we'll in, in two minutes. Sweet, let's do it. We bet. Right, we're back with part two. Harry's actually just really come up with a really cool idea. Uh, we're going to go over our own lyrics and see which one means the most to us. So I think... The ones that stick out, didn't they? You yeah. were the one who came up with the first idea, though, didn't you? So you know what you got. Yeah, I've got a couple though. I'm, I'm still having a quick You're look. You're still. So, yeah, yeah she only quoted Posty, man. Like, oh, yeah. yours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, so. Um, I've got a couple. They're, they're probably the most recent ones I've written, so that's probably why they're fresh in my mind because I don't think I ever really write a song and it's it's not what I'm feeling at the time. Like, um, one of them for me is like, I think you pulled it up as a lyric. So, one of the songs, it's, it's unreleased, so it's called Give Over. And it's, it's kind of a metaphor. It's like, see what you've done for the wall. There's a hole that fits a fist with no more plasterboard. It's obviously a bit of retaliation in anger and everything. Yeah. Like, I like that one, but like that wasn't actually like a life experience for me. Like yeah, It yeah. wasn't one of them that I've gone, I've, I've never put my fist to the wall. Like, I'm not a yeah. coil. Like, <laughs> you know, like, it sounds like a joke, like, but I know people that do and I know, yeah. like, and they kind of come from sort of different backgrounds to me, I suppose. Like, that was almost a lyric for them. Um, Northway was the one for me, actually. Um, as we're recording the latest album which will be out end of June cheeky plug <laughs> um, it was a 
me and one of my longest mates, Robbie, like we've known each other since playgroup, and we kind of went for like one of these lockdown walks as you do. And uh, it's all about the fact that in two, three years' time, he hopefully wants to live in Australia. And as I'm kind of walking, I'm kind of reflecting. I like, kind of took it in as like a really good chat, and we've spoke about like his goals, and he never knew what he wanted to do. So, but he, he's worked his ass off. He's done really well at what he has done, and yeah. he's in a position there like he's always wanted to live by the sea. So, rather than his job be his drive. His lifestyle has been his drive. Yeah. Uh, where I'm coming from, the polar opposite, the same way you are, and probably you're, yeah, you are okay. yourself, Harry. Where like I am comfortable not making money, yeah. as long as I can write a song, release it, and play it live at an open mic night. Yeah. You know, probably the Maverick. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, well, Shout out John Langford. Yeah, John so, Langford. We so love you, John. The, the look, like the looks of me, like it's kind of all about reflecting. Obviously, the place we grew up, which was. Northway, which is like obviously a little road on Sedgley, and uh, oh, what's the lyric? I've, I've, I've given you a massive build up, and I can't think of the actual <laughs> lyric. It's um, I think it's the bridge, and uh, and it's like the broken fence mends the pavement below, mm. and it's literally the gully that we used to walk on the way back from school, yeah. and it's literally because. I've never seen a nice, well painted fence. Like whoever owns the house has never once touched up this fence. Yeah. Like. But it's almost it's almost a metaphor for like stability, really, like because this fence has taken all the wind that it's ever had and all the rain, mm. just about standing. But if it wasn't for that being battered and kind of taking the brunt of it, like the floor itself wouldn't stand. And like I yeah. suppose it was like a long winded metaphor for that, really. And I walk past this fence this day, and the rubble's still crap underneath it and everything. But like it's almost a thing of like I suppose the people you grow up with and the people that kind of mould you and give you. And go, oh, like, keep doing what you're doing, like, keep sticking by it. Like, if that was to disappear one day, then the fence is worthless as well, isn't it? Like, yeah. and well, that was one of the lyrics. Like, I could go on all day about them, to be fair, but like, this is your pod, your, your chance to speak as well. Isn't it? So, <laughs> what's your? Yeah, I'll go for it to you first you if want you want. Me to do the morning. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Oh. I mean, that is one of them. <laughs> yeah. You two leading the, leading the show, <laughs> remember. No, but that is one of them, really. Mm. I know it's simple. Yeah, yeah, of course. But can we go together is literally about. Me and G, because obviously we haven't got the most money. Yeah. But we both got goals. G's hit her goal, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like she's got her job and she's mega happy. And but G's a great advocator for your goals well, as well, she, isn't her, it? Like, her, her, her drive is also me getting to what I get. Like, she supports me. Everyone knows she supports me to, like, the fucking end of the earth. Yeah, yeah. Like, she works and works so hard to keep us both. I bring money in, but not... Again, yeah, yeah, It's not a living yeah, yeah. wage, but... Again, it's for that end goal for both of us because then she can do whatever she wants, start her own business if this works. Because so. you stress as well, like if it wasn't for, like you couldn't be happy working a normal job. No. Like, and yes, you might have tough times, you know, whether it be financially, but I suppose it comes from the fact of like going, if we both want to love life and, you know, first of all, it's together. Yeah. Second of all, it's can we achieve these goals? And like you say, it's a simple lyric, but. Us, that's what makes it more reliable like obviously it was a single for you wasn't it so yeah. you know it, everyone can hear that phrase and relate to it but everyone has a different reason why that's relatable of course yeah so just because it's not specific to a time place or postcode like it's still like it's still a great lyric that's isn't a, it like, the thing is that you can be turned you can be turned on its head with can we grow and make a family together can yeah, we yeah. buy a house can we blah 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 which isn't my initial goal but obviously it's something for the future. But it's the life checklist as well, isn't it? Yeah, like... but that's, that's the thing is you can cover so many. I didn't I didn't intentionally write it for that no, reason, no. but it ends up becoming that reason. Like, I've always From said... 30 years' time, if you achieve everything you set out to achieve, yeah. and that becomes the next stage of your life, yeah. then that lyric means something different to you then as it does now. Of course it like, does. Yeah, well, I've always been one because of Because those... there's more of a question mark with it at the moment, but if it's 30 years' yeah. time and it works, then it's a statement, isn't it? it it's, it's almost like... I've never, I've never ever wrote a lyric with a specific meaning until yeah. I sit and think about it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because you know, you've written with me. Yeah, yeah. It goes down on the paper and it doesn't get but changed. It's subconscious, isn't it? You, yeah, yours yeah. is normally a train of thought. But yeah. that's what it always is. It's always straight on the paper and I don't ever edit lyrics. Yeah, yeah, of course. Another one's London, uh, which is a song yeah, literally, which is literally about <laughs> us. It's about us two going to London when we went, we stopped in that grotty hostel oh yeah, yeah mate but tell you it was fucking great there's, remember the spider's nest <laughs> yeah the mate there's, there's a spider's, spider's nest, nest in the corner of the room above the beds like 
It was rough. It was bunk beds, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. We got rid of you got rid of it, I swear you got rid of Mate, it. I wouldn't that Which one of you got crabs out of it? <laughs> <laughs> was that the excuse you gave? That was a hungry. <laughs> not, not me. Right, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's been beaty for the last <laughs> 12 minutes. <laughs> and tested twice a week. <laughs> no, but like Gotta be 19 Lisa Moore worries. He's, <laughs> he's got a crab in one of his random arm hairs. <laughs> No, it's a mad one because we, we stopped there, didn't we? And it, mate, it was rough when it was in the middle of. Uh, Dog, shit, Dog, where was it? It was in the middle of Wem, Boy Wem. It was Boy Wem, I can't. Wilsden Green. Wilsden Green. Wilsden Green, Wilsden right. Green. Mate, it was rough. We went out, didn't we, yeah. on the night, and it was rough, man. And then, When we say we went out on the night, we weren't on the town. No, no, yeah. we just went out for uh, a we walk. We went for a stroll. You, you weren't, we, you we weren't were, there wearing brogues. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we, we went on a right. stroll, and we were like, yeah, we're going to go back now. Yeah, <laughs> we not went out the gate because it was gated, yeah. which isn't a good sign straight away. Yeah. And then went, nah. And then we went back in. But there was these like, Hungarian women outside, weren't they? Yeah. Who were just there, out till four in the morning. They said, chatting outside. <laughs> and like, our window was like, I swear our window was open, yeah, a bit. Because it was like hot. It was like warm. It was, yeah, it was mm. roasting. Like, like the time of year we were out. It was like July time. Was Remember about a burnt? Yeah. Mate, it was rough. Karen. That, Karen gave us water, though. She was security yeah. woman. And we kept going, Karen. Karen. <laughs> and she, she just got annoyed. In the so end. is there a lyric that stands out for you on London? Or is it just the concept No, no. The is? concept itself is quite a big... Again, that's why I kind of stick by London as one of the best things mm. I've ever written. But the the chorus is just it covers everything for me. Can we chase the dreams that we have, or is it a virtue? Like, is it? Yeah. That was kind of like, is it something we shouldn't really be doing? Is it something that's handed to us? Mm. Um, is it a privilege to even think that we can achieve? Yeah, these yeah, that's dreams? kind. Of, yeah, that's a better explanation. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's a loads better. Uh, can we chase the dreams we have, or is it a virtue? Is it fair to say we're scared, or are we just oh, worn we just through? Yeah, can't hit that now it's coming down half a stick when we do live are oh, we just worn through <laughs> and to be fair this is a little that you pointed out was uh, a penny's all I have but nothing I'm owed to yeah so like, meaning nothing's coming in but the stuff I'm, coming I'm, out I'm, yeah. yeah yeah it was like I know I've got no money but the money like Rinse, yeah. yeah like it's kind of like no no it was, it was a bit different than that because mm. it's nothing I'm owed to so I, I'm owed nothing from anyone oh okay yeah but I'm, I'm but I've got I've got a penny because everyone yeah. everyone knows I'm broke. And, and again, like when you take it no, from no, that, no. like I suppose <laughs> the like the lyrics can be interpreted different ways. But I suppose when it's delivered with the melody that you put to it and the chords and the fact it starts picking up and driving it, mm. it's not a song about poverty and hard times. It's a song no. about freedom, passion, and you know what? Like if this is all I've got, like you know we've said at two in the morning when we've both like we maybe scrammed together a, a bit of change to get a loaf of bread a bit of milk to go in our tea and I've maybe got two beers like yeah. we've gone well we've got nothing like all our mates have got a lot more in the bank account than that we are but we can wake up tomorrow and make but music fucking up here we've got yeah dog. and yeah. you know we've got the thing that makes us want to wake up and do something which is why they've I'm... got to wake up and clock in and it's, it's yeah. not it's not a slight on them it's not um, it's not a dig at them it's just we know what we've got and we know that we couldn't do what they've done but of course. to have this and like, again like, with your melody that you put with it it becomes a song about going. Not only if we we can do it like this, like we can do this for the next forty years, whether we've got a penny or whether we've got a million. It's like, quite, if you if you if if you go into it that true. deep, the the melody is actually quite desperate. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously, it's the top of my range. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm genuinely having to strain to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's so that's where the emotion desperate. comes so in that's as well, where it sounds and that's so where desperate. it sells. Like even the lyric in there, which is about there's a knock on the door. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's for me. That's about bailiffs. Yeah, yeah. Like, because that's all I've ever dealt with. It's like a gritty with. reality behind it all. Well, it is, that's yeah. Like but, kind of like... but people can pick up, what, pick up from it what they want. Yeah, yeah, of like, course. Because yeah. you'd still leave them open ended. Like... Yeah, yeah. What about you? I mean, first of all, I want to say. By the On way, the point I out, I, I love you, bitch, yeah, as like... a really heartwarming lyric. <laughs> <laughs> With my really last breath, bitch. I said, "I love you, bitch." That's how I feel. When you no, say it like mean, that, there, like, there is like angst behind that. You know what I mean? There's mm. people are, like there is that like fucking there is that rawness behind behind absolutely everything. All right. Would that have and, come like, from a place of like anything. you've had an argument, you've turned to a lot. I do love you, but fucking hell. Like, yeah, you know, you, maybe from that. Literally, like, it's like it's like me, you can you can love you your partner's pieces but like there's times where like you know there's a time where like you you, 
you're pissed off with, yeah. with them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, I can't imagine you were well, like, singing I, nursery rhymes when your kid pooed on your phone. Like, yeah, and if you yeah. want to tell that story, <laughs> then, you know, we can. <laughs> <laughs> you're not there going, she's the most beautiful little gift I've ever had. You're going, the shit in my speaker. Yeah. Like, We've just had this conversation off screen. Oh, okay. Shed the light had, if you want, Terry. We had this conversation out, outside. But we, um, it wasn't intended for camera, but we bought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bringing you the content you want. <laughs> Bringing you the content that you want and need, but you didn't know. Like, before 8am this morning. Like, oh, it was today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. today. It is raw as it comes, bro. You wonder why, you'd be wondering how I'm even holding my phone at this point, really, wasn't you? But, like, this shit's... This shit's in, I'm more scared about the fact that I've opened your beers for and you've also touched them beers. That's what I'm saying. We're in good hands. We're in good hands. Here she is. She's, she's mega cute. She's mega cute. She's, See she's, she's gorgeous. Hang on a minute. Before the screen, screen goes off. She's mega cute. Yeah, mate. She looks awesome, doesn't she? Yeah, but she... I don't know. Call call the cute thing. <laughs> this little very boy sat on the cage. <laughs> she goes... Uh, she, basically, this morning, or well, before 8 a.m. and even, like come around had you been to sleep at this point <laughs> barely <laughs> yeah, yeah we had been to sleep but Rain decided to like basically went to change a nappy obviously it's the morning change a nappy fresh nappy took a nappy off she hopped down off the bed because Jess was going to the toilet she literally followed her and pissed on the carpet <laughs> and then like she continued to follow her then into the bathroom and piss on the bathroom floor too. So there's two puddles of yeah. piss. Well, the carpet one when a puddle, you just soak through. You know oh, what I mean? that's, the, that's where it's bad. You know what I mean? You have to get the um, the carpet spray. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I need a the rug chief. doctor. <laughs> but like, anyway, I'm I'm not rich enough to have a rug doctor. So I literally just get on my hands and knees with the the, the soap a and toothbrush. sponge. Your, <laughs> toothbrush. Your misses his toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bitch. <laughs> done that and then so yeah, as you can imagine we're already like bloody hell there's two pisses on the floor <laughs> that's a ball like and what then, she is also in the toilet having a wee herself yeah, 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 and you're yeah, there yeah. clenched like <laughs> I really need one <laughs> so I, I look I give I give Rain my phone like obviously she's like being cleaned down at this point and then I'm, I'm going to get a nappy but while I'm doing so I want to slip some clothes on first because at this point I hadn't even got a chance to even like slip my clothes on I was just in my boxes and, and that you know what I mean just so, traumatising for any child yeah, yeah traumatising <laughs> for any child it's enough to make you shit <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, long story short I gave my phone so she can watch Bing she loves Bing she watched that while I was slipping my shorts on and my t-shirt I turn around yeah before I even got a chance to go and get the nappy and she's there in the corner like <sighs> <laughs> and I'm like if we can do editing to zoom and, on your face <laughs> we'll this and I'm like, I'm like that sound I know that sound anywhere I'm, I'm turning around and I'm like <laughs> You shit, and uh, like the smell hits me from across. Sorry, right? I mean poopies. I mean poopies. <laughs> and, and like, go over here, and like, she got at this point. She dropped my phone on top of a lump of shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, are you mad? I'm like, are you serious? Like, I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. You know what I mean? They didn't tell me you get to this roof, and I was like, so okay. You're going to fucking nurse. I, I was like, you're there. Can we grow together? <laughs> I was like, this is bad. But uh, it basically it, it, it mushed into me fucking phone speaker and that. Oh, that's can't, rough, yeah, man. it is rougher than a dog's. That's probably ass, still man. in the grill. It don't matter how much you clean it, bro. That's in the grill. That's yeah, like, yeah. What did you clean? No, no, no. With? I, I gave it a good fucking scrub, mate. I like. They use nappy. Nah, no, no, like fucking like proper like soap and like um scour and that scrubbed all around. Oh. Phone, scrubbed all the it misses his toothbrush again. The back <laughs> and then I got like cotton buds and that to like get in the speakers. Oh, and mate, fair play. Like. But like it was, it was, it was gnarly, man. It was really, oh, really was, honestly, do, I would advise. I don't know. It, you accepted but... another podcast to be honest. I've gone. I'm out for the next month. Bro, <laughs> <I've been> <laughs> I lost my cat and I was on rails. <laughs> I'm taking it for full day. After I'm a... taking it to boss man at Merriot. Like he's gonna reskin it. Like. <laughs> oh fucking. That's funny, mate. That's brilliant, there, man. Right, back to the lyric then. So, shit, yeah, 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 we did. We did okay. Back to the lyric. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to be in his okay. next single, so. <laughs> shit on the floor. I love it when you shit on the floor. Nah, she, um, she's got with her, man. Cover of blonde. Well, hanging on the telephone. When he listens to any song, he's going to go, this sound shit. Oh, wait. <laughs> when it, like, getting back Puts to... it on full volume, it gets a waft because it's moving like the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's great, man. <laughs> honestly, it's rough, man. Be careful, honestly. Back to the lyrics. Yeah, back, back, to, the, back, back to, the to the lyrics. Um, on the keeping on the subject of like, of like, rain. Now, now that everyone knows rain and who she is, okay, uh, she um, she's one and three. Three, nearly three months, one or three months old. So I don't know if that's a weird way to say it. Just for, say for, like for parents, it's fourteen months. months yeah, yeah, well, come think, on. I'm yeah, happy yeah. that you say one and three months because yeah. you're not. I mean, you're not a proper months, dad. I think <laughs> fourteen months sounds like yeah, they sound young still. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's very like young. if you call them fourteen months, like you're probably coming here wearing a polo shirt. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah, type yeah, of dad. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's fourteen months. How is she in the office? We live by a police station, but we've got a great primary school on the course. We uh, I, like I wrote a song, um, tell me, and yeah. like, if, like if you haven't heard, tell me, go listen to it. Fucking banger. <laughs> like, um, if uh, I might as well, plug, I might as well leave. make a plug. I've only got eighteen monthly listeners. <laughs> but uh, but uh, like I um, I wrote a song, tell me, and in the song, like, the song is all pretty much it's it's light hearted, it's fun, it's uh, it's upbeat. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's it's a nice it's definitely a positive song. Song. Summer, but you know what I mean but like mm. there's there's a lot of like com- complete realness and like truth mm. to it but like at one point in the song I say all I ever saw was the rain in the dark days like and that lyric is literally oh, that's about a great lyric, that, li- yeah. that lyric is literally about like rain as in like not the rain like I didn't yeah. see the rain I saw rain in the dark days went to work if you'd have called it Emily yeah. would you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and all I saw was the Emily in the dark days you have been as deep all I saw was Emily in the dark no it's just like it's don't, that don't work does it no <laughs> that's a but, fucking great lyric yeah. yeah. but she um, honestly like when I wrote that like tell me like it's one of those songs I wrote from start to finish it like flooded out of me do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. it wasn't like I had to come one back quick to it it just like, happened yeah. like and it was just, it was probably one of the well. It is one of the best songs I've ever, I've ever wrote, and um and yeah, I say in it, uh, all ever sorts of rain in the dark days, and that's because, like in the dark days, uh, the only thing that keeps me afloat is like waiting for like what we spoke about. Yeah, yeah we've already off, touched on it, like, yeah. haven't we? But like, and in addition to that, another song that I am um, like do like say something like pretty raw, and it's like we were on about last breath, like. With my last breath, I said, love you, bitch. That's not the part I'm, I want to discuss, but further into the song, I say, like, I got blood on both my hands for shit. I knew I shouldn't do. Like, learn my lesson. This confession was the only piece of you. I removed it from my system. I feel better. That's the truth. I love cigarettes and Hennessy whenever I feel blue. But the first part that about having blood on my hands for shit that I know I shouldn't do, like, I've done things that, like, I know I shouldn't have done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, the guilt at the time and stuff like and after more so like it eats you away do you know what I mean yeah. and like you feel Mate, like you can still be in bed at two in the morning yeah, yeah. and they're just coming to your head you'll just think about like, shit that yeah. you've done throughout your life and you're like fuck like I wish I hadn't done that even if it's just like something completely like sometimes random, you go you if I'd have done that I'd probably be alright but there's yeah. always something that will always just yeah. come up isn't that yeah. like and 100% and like the next line like let my lesson this confession was the only piece of you as in like yeah like I've like got oh, you might get over someone you might forget forget about them as such like as much as you can but like until you really open up and discuss what's truly bothering yeah, yeah. you deep down yeah never gonna get over no. it so like that confession was the last piece that I've got to hold on to so um, I removed it from my system I feel better that's the truth it's literally what it says on the tin <laughs> you know what I mean but like you, you've just said that like obviously a lyric I brought up downstairs was obviously you're on about like, the stuff that like you wish you could erase like yeah. lyric I mentioned to you downstairs like the, the opening of the, like, the second verse is erasing all I've done wrong as the bottles drained and the colour drains from my face, it's, yeah. it's a reflection at three in the morning. The but it's from the exact same perspective, perspective of yours, but probably for different reasons. Yeah. Like, and but again, I suppose like if you were to ever like A and B like mine and your songs, you'd never go, "Oh, they sound similar." Yeah. No, no. But then actually, the if content. you sit and listen to the lyrics, like, and that's that's maybe why there's a generation that listen to music like yours now because mm. they're hearing that in the lyrics. Mm. But I got that sort of stuff from. The generation before and seventies music and even nineties music and even like Ryan Adams over like the last twenty years like yeah. I get my angst and reflection from their songs but there's there's obviously a modern culture now which is like your music's a lot more relevant than the stuff I'm doing but it's like that is that's where the kids are getting it's all their the reflection same, it's all from embedding the same thing. but it's about the exact same yeah, topics yeah, like 
I wouldn't say that like my type of music is more relevant. Like it from you, like, you might think that, and that's easy to think because like I think that like drill and like mm. and music like that is more popular than my type of music. Yeah. There is it, I, I've got friends and stuff that like make that type of music, and like when I say that, I mean like artists like Deep, like and Central C, yeah, yeah. and like etc. So, so um, the list goes on. But like I've got friends that that that's the type of music that they make, and um, and honestly like. That's just like. Is that G with the NOS cutter? <laughs> <laughs> on the NOS. Please tell me that's picture on camera. <laughs> but anyway, like um. <laughs> just cra- what Bab, what that? have you just cracked a bottle off? <laughs> what is that's that? It's the lemonade, bro. She got it the sugar. She needs a sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ryan didn't buy a chocolate bar. And they got <laughs> shakes, man. Like. Christ. Um. We'll get G on for an addiction special. We'll just be about sugar. Like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I have to have my looks for my room. <laughs> no, bro, um, talk about that. I've gone into the new Iron Brew energy drink. Anyway. Mate, bro, it's ridiculous. £1.19 at the moment, special promotion price. <laughs> Shout out to the cost cutter by the North. Well, yeah, what is it usually? It's in a bottle. No, it's only just come out. Like, it's literally like a 330ml can. £1.19 for 330ml can? Bro, it's got, it's got 40% of That's your daily sweet. sugar, but it tastes like Iron Brew. But like, there's a zing to it, man. It's like, crack. But it's bro, iron like, it, it's ramped up. Like, yeah. it's like Stella with Iron Brew, with a whiskey chaser. It's like Iron Brew moonshine, mate. Like, you'll <laughs> <it'll>, make <laughs> it, you'll make you cry if you do enough of them, like, mate. But I, I'm if you do, do enough of them, talk, <laughs> talk, <laughs> talking, yeah, do talking that. about sugar, <laughs> talking about sugar rushes. Like, I thought I'd just quickly pop that in, like, buy it because it's sick. Like, <laughs> what was I even talking about you before that? No, 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 no. We moved. No, moved on slightly. About um, genres, being yeah, yeah, than other genres. And drill, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like for example, like <laughs> we said, and drilling. You don't know what drill is. To e- even Black like, and Decker, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, like, well, you, you won't know what, but like, like if you look, at, if you went onto Apple Music and that now, like, like within the top within the top ten, you've got like Central C and that, which like Central C, like, yeah, he's not, he, he's not bad. That the sounds good, but like he chats. Pure fucking crud, you know what I mean? <laughs> that, like, I can't fuck with that. I know the word crud for about like, eight years, bro. I'll, like... I'll be honest, like I can't fuck with that, and that's why, like, I'm not, I'm not in that scene at yeah. all. Like, I'm not labelled into that, and that's why, I, like, honestly, I don't have like a very large fan base. I know people that like are doing that kind of music, and and like uh, uh, people from the age of like seventeen to like. 20 like yeah. 4 26 or whatever like loads of them are like listening to like D Block and Central C and all and yeah, Fredo yeah. and all these artists they they absolutely love them like they absolutely love them so sorry back but to like, you but um, then I like in my spare time I don't listen I yeah. don't listen to none of that and none of that inspires my music the only thing like if anything like more music like rock and like and like acoustic sounds and stuff yeah, yeah. like that inspires who's me, the like, artist like, you go to at the moment at the moment um let me just honestly just give me one second because I've got a follow up question to this we I'm need to answer I'm going to see answer. what's on what <coughs> click on Spotify sure? let's see what more Ryan Adams, Adams yeah, yeah Ryan Adams all day so like, like well honestly at the mo- at the minute like and I'm, I'm not ashamed <laughs> of this like I'll be, I'll listen to like a couple of Bieber's new albums yeah, yeah. songs yeah, everyone's album. getting mad about that honestly I listen to it good, yeah. it's good. Um, <laughs> other than that like uh Quando Rondo, but like, I mean, that's just like, honestly, no, it sounds yeah. mad, yeah. Sounds and he's Spanish. a mad guy. But like, no, yeah, like, Rondo. Like, 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 he's like, the, the content, like, he's so like melodical and, yeah, and yeah. like, and honestly, his voice is like, he's actually, it's wicked. So, my, my um, like, yeah. added question to this then is, I feel like you'll always do music that's, you you're going to write about yourself, it's always going to be autobiographical. Mm hmm. Do you envision the sound behind the lyrics and the melody changing? Do you, do you see almost a natural evolution? Like, would you get to a point where you try and get string sections on and maybe get a guitar player in that can take it to another realm that you couldn't actually portray yourself because of your limitations on the instrument? Like, Locks yeah. available Monday to Friday. <laughs> so, have, you, have you got, like, are you currently making the music because it can get made on a Mac on maybe a low budget? And you can still tell your story as you would, whether it would be poetry or whether it be in a song form. And do you have aspirations to take it to more of a grandier sort of? It's def- I mean, it's definitely why, like, a big reason why I use like beats is because, like, like, it's a vehicle for you to put your lyrics and melody yeah. on rather than and, like, you 
Yeah, and honestly, that. I don't. I honestly don't even know enough people to access like a full band. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe if maybe if I blew off like using like beats, yeah, yeah, beats yeah. and stuff, I would. Uh, the first thing I'd do is invest in a full band. I would, would you want say everything. I would want everything recreated <clears throat> in like actual. Would you say you know if Post Malone's been completely, almost disregarded by the rap community, going, he's kind of used us for his fame, and now he's going to do the real music which he wants to do, yeah. which is like more than the rock route into that. Do you reckon that it's more of a case of he dealt with his limitations and his budget to make a music and make a fan base and now he's actually got the ability to get people like Travis Barker on drums who are like people that he classes as heroes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not actually same. him changing who he is. He's just able to actually go into another realm of what he's always wanted to do but maybe couldn't yeah. when he was 18 doing White Iverson. I, like, I, I, don't, like, I do not believe in like capping anyone into a, a, a genre like, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean I don't believe in it's that it's not fair especially I, to like, we've changed you four can, times the last two yeah, years yeah. between us like, like, no, like, genuinely yeah, yeah, you, can, you can play you can like, I can play a song to you acoustic yeah but like I swear to god I, I, I can go and write you like some of like, yeah, yeah. the meanest fucking rap lyrics yeah, yeah. you know what I mean but I don't like, I don't rap but like I literally like just like it's like I class it as like, like, I said like this, singing you know I, I said mean? this to Ryan about it so obviously the only time I've seen you perform live was at the Sunflower Lounge you had an electric guitar you kind of sang I think you did a couple of 1975 covers I think you did a couple of your own as well yeah um, I remember seeing that and obviously I know you changed and you went down this, this other route but then I was like I'd actually love to see you perform with an electric guitar doing the chords that you're doing mm-hmm. but then rap because no one's actually really doing that at the moment and that's a different realm that you can kind of show yourself go like I could do this but like I'm, I'm, I'm doing it as a backing for that and then obviously when I saw the video that you two did together mm. I was like that's something that I could probably listen because I'm more likely to listen to your lyrics with that background yes. like so like I just think it's something else that like would be cool if I heard you did it like yeah. and even like obviously I've seen you've been doing it on Instagram and you would like you got like a Spanish classical guitar, I think. Yeah, it? and that's just. Yeah, Rain's yeah. probably pooed on it, but <laughs> like. <laughs> if it gets out, it gets out a G she chord, it gets out a G chord. She, she, to be fair, she goes over to it, she pulls the strings. Oh, my God, you need to bot that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, don't do that, mate. It's going to ping off in your face, like, bless her. But, but no, I have to keep away from it. She, she, she literally. If I have, if I'm playing guitar, she comes and she cocks a leg over it. She tries to sit on the guitar. <laughs> she thinks she can like, mm. <laughs> like saddle it. But anyway, she like. She's 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 mad. She's mm. great though. She's funny. But she um, but no, honestly, she, I, she she's very like rhythmic and stuff. And like I think she gets that because like I was just singing to her when she was in like yeah, early man. and that as well. Like she's heard my songs. Like so she's familiar <laughs> Bro, with my voice. Bro, you made something up on the spot, right? At eighteen, she's gonna go. I'm gonna be a solo artist. Dad, like you can't tell me to get a real job. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be a rapper. And then she'll sing a minute. You go. I sang that to her 20 years ago. <laughs> like, like, you have a PRS copyright yeah. suit against the lock. You, you'll then do like a diss track calling at your own door with that <laughs> yeah. copyright. Bro. Rain on your parade. <laughs> 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 yeah, honestly, Again, wouldn't work if she's called Emily. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I can, that name I can plug it into anything. That is <laughs> gold, that is. But, um, brilliant, but, but no, getting back onto topic, what was the topic? <laughs> uh, a bit like uh, evolution of genres and yeah, yeah. how like, you could maybe see yourself in the future. That, that's exactly why I called the project Genre Fluid because like, like, n- n- like not, it's, better, yeah. it's because I don't, I called it that because I wanted to make a very, very, very big statement about I do not condone capping anyone into a certain genre. Yeah. Like that's not okay. Like, because for example, like, they're shit, I've they're heard Ryan play shit. songs, yeah. That are like like rock songs, yeah, smash them. But then I've heard him play the softest acoustic yeah, yeah, songs, yeah. and I've thought beautiful, like you know what mm. I mean. It's just like shimmery and that. It's the same with like I listen to your song. Was it is it in Birmingham? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it called Birmingham? I think it's the one I showed. I might have showed him that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, it's called Birmingham. Thirtieth of June. Yeah, yeah. Like, is oh, you put a date on it now? Have you? Have you just put a date Birmingham? on it? Got no choice. There, I've always. <laughs> I've had a beer. I've accidentally plugged something that I should know. I knew I'd get my hands into something good on this podcast. We've made you talk about your drug use. I think that's the least of it. We've made you announce an album. This is good. This is good. It's not even done. I know. I've got a great picture of Birmingham I'm using for the album, but there's nothing else about it that's done. Honestly, there's a song you've got called Birmingham. There is one called Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. If that's right. That song's fucking wicked. I heard you play it on... Instagram live yeah that's like, yeah when oh, okay, but yeah. obviously that's the thing so like I, I fucked with that heavily and I, I, I really like the way like 
you sound on that track. The only use a bird, mate, I'd tuck you out right into the <laughs> away for saying that. Sweet talking. But, yeah, like, but that's the thing as well, like, I'm, I'm currently in a rebuild myself because we, be, we, be, we were a party band where people would come, get pissed, jump around, a few idiots would crowd surf, mm-hmm. love Alex Pilot. Um, <laughs> but it was a thing of, like, we was we was just constantly said it like playing to the same people and like I know there's more to me as a songwriter and like, I'm there going like you've I've had this song out for a year like none of you actually really have asked me what it means or you you don't care like you'll sing along but yeah. you're not looking into the lyrics and like that's my strong point and I'm there going like mm. so like the reason that there's there's definitely like this album like there is twelve thirteen songs done for it there's probably I'd say nine is definitely going to be on it if I write another couple they'll be on probably because I don't like yeah. some of them. But I'm there going, I've got no actual like proper rock and roll tracks on here. Like I'm here going like there's a lot of just slow six eight tracks or there's yeah. some that are like in that sort of in between ground. But I'm going like again, I've got twenty five monthly listeners, like I'm not upsetting the world by deciding that I wanna make music that's no, not no, what people are used to hearing. Exactly. Like people yeah, have heard exactly. me play for two years and still don't care. People are into I'm not gonna to try and appeal to my friends that like my rock music. Like I'm gonna go, well, I want to do this. I want to record it like this. I want it to sound a bit like Ryan Adams' Prisoner. Yeah. yeah. And that's how my album's going to sound. And yeah. like, if it does anything, won't. But if it did, no, great. It will. But if it doesn't, mm. at least I can wake up in the morning and go, well, I love it. Yeah. Like, no one else has to. And that's if they do, it's a bonus. Yeah. But if they don't, I don't care. Because six months' time, I'll probably write another rock and roll track that sounds like T Rex. Mm. Or it sounds like Alice Cooper's like early stuff. And I'll go, you still probably don't like that anyway, but like, but like, but again, <laughs> yeah. as long as I don't ever try and please myself, you'll please other people in the long run because people will realise that there's a transparency between what you do and what you write. Yeah. The same way, like, I'd never filter a lyric because it might upset my brother or my mum, for instance. Yeah. Like, I never would. I never yeah. call it. I'm not going to diss track on my mum, but like, <laughs> but I never filter anything I'm going to say because if you if you don't stand and you don't say for something people will realise that you've got nothing to say yeah. and that's the worst thing you can never be as an artist you just tell forget the stories boys. I think I did yeah And but like, but that's the thing like you, you've got to only be yourself and if you start trying to censor who you are and what you do you're already dying day by day yeah. and you'll wake up in 10 years time maybe as a failure but not even recognise the artist you pretended to be for the last 8 years yeah, like sure. you have to, I and think what is the point I think like, like if you find yourself having to dilute yourself around around other people mm. you have to always rotate the question on like not not is what's wrong with me more like yeah, what's yeah. wrong with like what is it that other people can't take me? yeah, yeah. You know what i mean because like you should be able to accept everybody for exactly who they are i've been around some people that are like i mean for example like i'm quite quiet and like more quiet and more like reserved and yeah, like yeah. Then like my sister, my sister's very like bubbly, isn't she? She's yeah. very like, you know, she's like she'll chat your ear off. But like, I I kind of like I'm more like chilled and yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not so much like that. But like my sister's personality is like it's it's an overwhelming personality. But like like you learn to like adore everybody for yeah, exactly yeah. like who they are. And like even like you learn you learn patterns of like how other people like are with you. And like therefore it has an effect on like exactly like how you are with them and yeah. stuff but like obviously like everybody everybody's different and everybody is like entitled to be different but like obviously like me and you are completely different like there's no reason in theory that we get on the way we do because for every time I make a tit of myself and say something stupid you're probably quietly in the background with your arms folded as you are now <laughs> like going <Did> going <laughs> oh we shouldn't have said that like but there's there's a balance isn't that and like when people try and mould you into like if you start trying to make me act more like you the same way if I was trying to start going oh, I'll have this can't like it wouldn't work because thing, it? You, you, it, it doesn't work like that does it but like you know there's probably things I do that annoy you in the same way like this morning for instance I've woke up and going I was like, trying to get someone on the podcast you're in bed till one like yeah, yeah. but obviously I've been up for two three hours going like I hope he wakes up soon like yeah but it's it's not. I'm not gonna then pass judgment. I'm gonna go like, well, I'll just watch YouTube. Like that's the thing. I'm not gonna try, then try and wake you up and to do something that I'm on a different way of it. Yeah. Like, but that's the thing. I'll wait till like, you wake up and then we'll crack on. Like, but like on the flip side of that, you know how impatient I am. Mm. So like, <clears throat> I might sleep till one, but I know for a fact we've got a podcast booked Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're there going, oh, I can't really do it. Yeah, exactly. But I'll be like, there going, fucking 
Come on. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it, it, it's the same, but it's the same with obviously. When you, you enjoy the album as well. Produce the album, yeah. Like always on your arse. Another take, another take, yeah, another yeah. take. But then I'll get up at two. But the, the, then there was a juxtaposition, <laughs> yeah. like like Rick Rubin, bro. The, 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 there was like a balance that probably at times we struggled to find, and there was at times when we were really finding that balance perfectly. Like, but you come away. Obviously, when I then left, like you go, like yeah, like think we've got something like mm. and some of the things don't quite stick and then some of the like some of the ones that like I'm there going like oh we'll think these are great in 10 years time are probably from the days where we've gone record that yeah. like yeah you know and they're the moments that you strive for and like it's just one of those it's things the flicker like, you can never force it like but like the, with the flicker <laughs> personalities these three these three people in this room you would not put them in the room if you saw them like no like obviously you enjoy a beer. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows I don't drink a drop. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. why do we get on? Yeah, yeah. But because that... you you've sometimes had to coddle my ass when I've been two pieced. Like, yeah, well, yeah, obviously, what we spoke about that in yeah, the last podcast, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. Like, but same with you. Obviously, you listen to com- well, you don't actually. We've learned that you don't <laughs> listen to completely different music to us. Yeah. But as an image, and as you think I do, as what you portray style, as an artist, yeah. yeah. I mean, with three completely different artists. But having said that, since the moment Harry's walked through the door today, we've had the exact same conversations on camera as we have off camera. Mm. And all we've done really, like, we've probably laughed more off camera and we've talked about the more serious stuff on camera. Yeah. Just because we've asked certain questions. But there hasn't actually been a moment where it's felt forced or no, it's felt all. contrived because even if, again, We've spoke a lot over these podcasts about music that I wouldn't even recognise it if it was played in next. Like, yeah, but you, not like I'm in next anyway. Like I ain't buying them jeans. But like, <laughs> yeah. but it's one of them things where like I will go well. But I know that you can bring a different perspective that I don't, like. My circle doesn't have people that listen to your music. Yeah. So when you start mentioning artists, like the only way I could relate was from that Peep documentary because I've watched it. Because yeah. I have an art, I have an interest in artists, mm. regardless of their music. Like. Mm. I might hate him as a musician, but like I've watched the David Lovato thing because I actually want to hear a story, and it's actually yeah. really relatable when you take past the fact that like I would never ever play her tracks on Spotify no, no. or buy her records. And I think Shawn Mendes, yeah, and that and that documentary is brilliant as well. And like I suppose that's the common thing is that like you, again you would put all even at times like all three of our music, even though we work together, yeah. you put all our tracks together. Like if you, say if you put Boeing of mine and then say Winterfall from you. Yeah. And then obviously like one of yours, Harry, That's like great. you'd go, none of them like they would never get on. As if you played them back to back, it wouldn't work. Yeah, like it doesn't make sense. Like no. th- they'd never be in one artist's discography. They're three different artists, three different sounds. Like, it's just the music that is it's just the general idea of being a musician and that. But the purpose and like Yeah, that's you're not on this couch now, like unless you've decided to be an artist. Like mm-hmm. if you occasionally did the odd rap song but you was a very functioning human being that like worked a nine to five. Yeah, but like has always wanted to work that nine to five. Like yeah. you wouldn't have been on this couch. Like yeah, of course. You're here because we can relate to you from like a graph sort of perspective and like working on a grind and your passion and your love. Like yeah. that's why you're here because your stories are gonna hopefully if there's one person watches it, like they'll relate to the same way that like we think that we can do this because it's something that we think that people will relate to. And if they don't then Hopefully that we can bring down the curtain of artists that they do enjoy. Yeah. Cool. All eighteen of your monthly listeners, Harry. Like, hopefully and they'll watch it. Go, like, they get it. Like, watch yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, all eighteen people need to be watched. But it's the fact that we, as three artists, can bring those monthly listeners to like mm. this. Like, mm. I mean, we, we, none of us are <clears throat> blowing up. No, no. But no. but, but we helps. wouldn't do this it, again. The same way we've, we've said, like if music was for money we'd have quit seven years ago yeah yeah. we said that we're not doing this at the moment because we're there going this is our way into the industry like we're doing this because I woke up about four months ago or I was probably it's probably one o'clock at night after a couple of beers I've gone let's start a podcast let's just talk about something we love Mm -hmm. obviously at the time the initial idea of this was that we was going to talk about favourite records and get people on to talk about their favourite records I then found a YouTube channel called Football and Feelings, which was basically this, but he was they were talking to like football personalities and yeah. I imagine his idea is to get footballers on and talk about their struggles within the game. Yeah. I've gone well like I know that a lot of musicians have similar thoughts and mm-hmm. we have similar struggles, like let's put it to a camera because we'd have these conversations, whether it be in a pub or 
yeah. a house anyway. Yeah, yeah, so we might as well just do it on camera. Exactly. And, and then again, else be people, people might relate to it and <clears throat> even if they don't do music, they, they might hear the stories that you've brought forward to Dice and they might go like, but I felt like that. I'm like, me and my mates have been in a similar situation mm. and their voices might be com- might have been completely different because maybe their background was different but there's definitely everyone can relate to that sort of like trying to reach for something and like if you're lonely you'd probably rather attach yourself to six wasters than no one at all like yeah, as well yeah. and they're not wasters they're probably people just searching for the same thing themselves exactly. and some people manage to what I'd, I'd say is get out and yeah. thrive like you've currently done maybe some don't and Maybe that's just a cycle that it will well, be like, a running yeah. theme. As, like, you, as you've seen, like, obviously, <clears> like, <throat> like Pete and fucking Juice, they did feel victim of it, didn't yeah. they? Obviously, both of those, and like, that's a huge waste of talent. But all very young as well. I, I mean, mean, like, even Juice is twenty one. Like, they yeah. could have been you right now, with having like obviously a little girl and everything. Yeah. Go like, but even it, it was a coping too. mechanism, but like, been able to get out, like. Mm. They could have either been like that or they could be in the exact same position they, they were times. in and time just maybe hasn't caught up with them until it does. Maybe it's it's one of them. Yeah. But it's a fascinating concept, isn't it? And I'd imagine we could talk about it all night, to be fair. I but think that's a good place to wrap. Yeah. yeah, should we do the quick fire questions? Yeah, we'll go straight to the quick fire questions. All right, so Harry, what is the best moment you've ever had in music? Best moment I've ever had in music? I mean... <sighs> Probably when I got the um, email from Dre. Yeah. Uh, and it, everybody questioned me on that. Whether that <laughs> Even all questioned yeah, like, well, is, is that though. is that authentic? Is that authentic? But like, hundred percent like authentic. I mean. So was he not Doctor Dre? No, Dre's post below his manager. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Not Doctor Dre, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that'd be a whole different. But as a listener, like I hear Dre, and that's what I think. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm trying it's to called Dre London. Yeah, but no, I mean I sent him a track, like probably like three years ago or something yeah and um and he listened to it and he said it's a it's a track i got called angels versus demons you, it's, you can hear it on like on um oh like. well yeah and apple music and spot okay. uh, spotify you can hear it on there still so if you want to check that out but basically like that um i showed it to well i sent it him and he said that like it was good but like he thought it was too much auto tune, and he thought that um, it wasn't really like his vibe, and that. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, okay, well, like obviously I'm not gonna be everyone's like vibe, but yeah, yeah. I'll um I'll take that and I'll work on it. And I thought about like, well, okay, then like I thought about more about how other people hear it too, and about like also like when I listen back to it, I want to enjoy it myself yeah, thoroughly yeah. almost as if I'm listening to another artist you know course, what I mean because yeah. then I can confirm it's a good track yeah, yeah. and um, <clears throat> I don't think artists ever see it like that like if I wrote something and it could sound like perfection yeah. like oh they're going yeah well I sound slightly flat they're like yeah. what well, I probably deem as perfect music the I know that the artist that wrote it wouldn't hear that yeah. like yeah. so it's a hard thing to strive for as well isn't it like, yeah. but, but like but yeah the, like Definitely, that was the best moment because, like, mm. I, I, like it's mad it, that he replied. To yeah, and he, and he said that, and he, and he said that it. it wasn't like he released vibe and stuff. And then, like, literally, a couple months back, I, um, he messaged me, he emailed me, like I didn't even email him, he emailed me, um, and honestly, I, like that's how shocked I am still. Yeah. Over it. But like, he emailed me saying that, like, I'd commented. Is that your new co- song? Email yeah, last me. breath. He, last email breath. me. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I love you. I comment. I comment on his like on his post sometimes. Like not not like licking his ass or anything. They're just what like just <laughs> just like just like literally saying like that. That's fucking. That's cool. Like you're smashing yeah, yeah, it. Whatever. Yeah, of like smashing it. Um, because he really is. And like, um, obviously like the post and that like, he manages. Post Malone and, so and Tiger and Tyler yeah, like, yeah, no Tiger yeah, yeah. yeah. like he he manages Tiger <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I know yeah. about like the animal <laughs> yeah, Tigers yeah man she <laughs> calm bro there's a rock called uh, Leopard as well isn't there and Cheetah fucking <laughs> 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 yo Cheetah <laughs> yeah now they're smashing MC so, like, <laughs> I said to him like, like 
thank you. Like, I yeah, can't yeah. believe that you actually like. What did he say? Like, oh, well, yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah, should we go? Should we get that part first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he's like a, um, just listen to like you came with some cr- across your uh, song when I went on your profile. Um, just wanted to say that like it's really good. Um, keep on going. Yeah. And uh, he said, I hope you have like a, a prosperous new year. That's sick, uh, man. And that, that and is mad, like, isn't it? I was like. You know, it wasn't like he'd said, "Oh, come on, I'll sign you." You know what I mean? It's not like he said anything mad. It's but not. He said but enough. He, he said enough. Yeah. To, he said enough. Yeah, to boost He's me for you. at least probably a good another yeah. good two years and if music. You know what I mean? So in the next like two years, I don't feel like I'm I'm gonna give up because I've had that like certification from someone yeah. who really knows like. But bro, the thing is about. as well is that it. And it's it, in it sounds like you know? he's keeping an eye on you because he, he he sees something in you. Now, the day he decides to help you out, like, I, yeah. I imagine he's got followers. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if he goes, oh, Post, by the way, like, really like his art, he's like, listen to him. Post then does it. Because, see, that's how Post when I got found as well, wasn't yeah. it? Like, it'd be come to, like, it was Sam Clay, but like, a, a few rappers tweeted about it now or something. Mm-hmm. It becomes that, doesn't it? But, You've got. It seems to be like you potentially have that foot in the door. They're maybe just waiting for the track that they go. Of course, yeah. He's fucking yeah, nailed that, it. Like that's, it, that's yeah, the track that's we've been it. waiting for you to do for three, four years. Yeah, yeah. But then for me, like if I was you, I'd be constantly doing these tracks, going, "This is the one." Or like yeah, you know, yeah, working yeah. towards that. Like yeah. that's all you can do, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like exactly, and that that is where you can need to keep going for it. But um, sorry, on to the next. So yeah, five, so that was the highest point. Yeah, um, that was my highest point. Lowest point. And this can be music related or it can just be life, but I'd, I'd imagine they sometimes tie together so you can. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, my earlier music was probably me from like a, a, a worse place, yeah. So, yeah. like, I mean. How early are we talking? How many years ago? The music. I mean, right from the from the beginning almost. That's college much. time, like, Yeah, probably. like, coming out, like, Coming, just coming out of college as well, like from that point onwards, just kind of yeah. It was like there was there was a few bumps in the road and that as yeah. such, and it was tough. But like, yeah, there's times where I felt like I just don't. I, I'm I'm pretty fucking shit, and I don't yeah, want to do it yeah, anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As everyone does, you yeah, have yeah. points where you think, "Fuck me, I can't even write a song." Like, and that's just because you've got like writer's block or or whatever. But you feel like you can't help but criticise yourself you're like really like how can I not fucking write a song I haven't yeah. wrote one in like two months do you know what I mean That's you feel working. useless well, I was like, that like, the yeah, yeah like I'm, I'm the it. same I'm the same bro I'm the same like and it's I'm, like, I'm not scared to uh, to admit that like we we can only be honest as like musicians you yeah. know what I mean because it's not it's not nothing to be like afraid to say because some of the best music comes after such a silent time yeah, of course, yeah, yeah like of course. I haven't wrote a song since Breathe how yeah. long ago was that start of the year when it really I suppose the only thing that I'd imagine keeping you going day to day is that like you see Breathe as one of your best songs that you've ever written yeah, yeah. the people you're sending it to for feedback are going fucking oh, that's brilliant like I suppose it's not that bad when like your last one you feel like could be your best one like well the thing is grow together I went like I was like oh that was my best one yeah yeah then wrote... we said that about alone obviously before grow before together, grow together yeah. and obviously I suppose it, it gets mixed up in the audience's timeline because Alone Come Out after Grow Together. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But that was because you was that gassed about Grow Together, you've gone, it's got to go out now. And then you've gone, and we've got Alone, but obviously by the time Alone Come Out, you've gone, low, oh, yeah. like, yeah. It, maybe it wasn't right, but... I wish I'd have held Alone. I wish Alone would have waited for an album, really, because... Maybe, yeah. I just, I just can't... I just, but it comes in motivation as well, though, doesn't it? Like, when you, you push Grow Together so hard and, like... You, you talked about it to me like messaging like you know Catfish of the Bottom and fans like, on Instagram yeah. and stuff like because you knew that if they heard it they'd hear similar things with Catfish and they might relate to it and they did and so but you did that for like two months and like mm. day day in day out you, you're sending like 70, 80 maybe 100 messages so then when Alone comes out and I suppose first of all you maybe don't hear the same audience no so you're trying to go oh what was right. that? It's the beer. Oh, it was a burp building. <clears throat> so, yeah, so you're going, well, I don't hear the same audience or I can't message them. Hmm. Maybe the initial response from the release date wasn't as strong as the Grow Together one was to make you think that you're onto something. Yeah, yeah. 
and the culmination of that and maybe where you currently are in your life and everything just results in it wasn't as strong a release as Grow okay. Together but it do, but again when the next song comes and when it's breathing you know that it's a great track yeah. the motivation will be straight there and it's, maybe the maybe the reaction from people to hear Breathe is the reason that you then pick up a guitar again and write yeah. something that you then deem is better than the last one it's a thing of pushing Grow Together was exhausting yeah, yeah. It was exhausting. I was on it every day. We were filming fucking mm. acoustic videos every day. And then we did... Then Alone come out. I was just... I, I genuinely couldn't be arsed. Yeah. And but like, we'd sat in it for four or five months, haven't yeah, we? but that's the thing. I didn't have that initial yeah, love yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was kind of like, right, we'll put Alone out. It's great. It's a, it's, it's a good track. I mean, we worked hard on it. Yeah. But then it was like... But don't forget, if you're a bigger artist, by the time you record an album... A year later, it's finally getting released. Oh, yeah, of course you've lost But it. the thing is, is like you might not have the same enthusiasm for it, but you don't have to do the day-to-day promotion. Yeah, but like, also you sh- don't care. Also, like, I will, fucking, if you're in that position, you've got the fucking gigs to follow it up. Yeah, yeah. You've got a tour to fucking... You're in a rehearsal room. Fucking, I put a loan out. I'm sat in here for, like, fucking... Alone? <laughs> well, yeah, literally. <laughs> literally, like... Yeah. Grow Together was a, a hard push, and we got... Oh, past the goal and beyond like yeah, yeah. what was end, ended up 220 monthly listeners and then yeah. there's still six was this for alone? no this was for Grow, Grow Together, together. Yeah. but we passed the thousand streams which is the first one I've ever done we were here it was out for three years and it yeah. had 600 man that's a big achievement and then, like, we ain't done that like. but then it was like I don't want this to be seen like I'm bragging I'm not bragging because I, I fucking worked hard for it yeah like, yeah but I know you did like yeah, yeah. and you had the same conversation with me because you were doing the day to day promotion for Grow Together whilst we were recording my record yeah and you're there going you've got to push it every day like you've got to message all these people it's like otherwise why are you actually doing music yeah yeah, yeah. and obviously my, my initial response as a purist is going fuck doing that like I'm going to put an album out. if people like yeah. it they can like which it which is what you've always yeah, said yeah. if they don't it's alright because the next one will be in six months so I'm like yeah. You 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 were kind of in that mindset of going, I've got to push it, I've got to push it, but there also comes a time where like if you do that for a month and yeah, the results are good but they're not mind blowing, like no. your life's not changing because of the time you're putting in, you're gonna burn out. And, sure, yeah. and even maybe that push for grow together, like it might be the difference in say eight hundred streams. So like you may have only been on say three hundred streams if you hadn't have done all that, mm. but you got to a thousand because you did all that. Yeah. But then that might have actually delayed the fact that you haven't been able to write for genuine, a month, maybe. Genuine, like it could be the case. I fell like, out of love with music. Like that it could genuinely be the case. Like and I genuinely fell out of love with music because I I spent that much time fucking on Instagram and Facebook. And what's fleeting as well is like you'd send it to people, they'd listen to it. Obviously, reply back to you going really like it. And obviously, the conversation that we'd have quite frequently is, I just hope the monthly listeners stay. Of course, yeah. Because yeah. you're like, I've got it up to this point. Like, if they all stay, I've got something to really build on. And, yeah. you know, you're only maybe four releases and doing the same thing again before you've got a thousand monthly listeners. Yeah. Obviously, as soon as the 30, 30 day thing passes and you go, I've dropped 50. Well, that's the I've thing. dropped 40. Yeah. And it, it windows yeah. down. Like, obviously, when I released Universal Crit, I, I thought the same thing. I was going, if I can ma- maintain this monthly listeners now for another two months. They're all going to have over a thousand streams. They're all going to do this, like, and I'm going to be here. And then, as soon as like the month's nearly over, oh, do you want that? no, 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 no. Do water? No, no, no. Is that is that a fresh bottle? Uh, I filled it up earlier, but you can have it. Oh, I have a little. Bit. Oh, do you want a beer? That wasn't even what I was looking for, but yeah, actually, I do need some water. But now, now, I what thought, are you looking for? Nothing. I thought I saw like I thought I saw an energy drink down. I thought that was an energy. There's drink. a bit of Pepsi in there, bro. <laughs> Um, uh, that's probably but yeah, like, but I, I, like, I feel like I was in the same boat. Cause like, if everything stays the way it's going, I could be in a really good position in a month's time, and then you blink and a month passes, and you go, "Oh, now I'm on sixty monthly listeners instead of hundred and fifty. Now I'm on thirty monthly listeners." Obviously, we're joking. Like, obviously, you're on eighteen. Is it? I'm on twenty five at yeah. the moment. Like, give me another month. I'll probably be on nine again. Yeah. And it's like yeah. you then go, and I think a lot of even bigger artists have talked about this because. There's a constant struggle to... People don't buy an album anymore and have it in their collection for 20 years to, that they then grow to love. Yeah. People will give you 30 seconds on Spotify mm. and if they're not hooked on the first track, 
they've, they're on the next playlist. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. different playlists. Artists like have put under so much scrutiny at the moment to constantly release great music at a rate that is never sustainable. Like, there's a reason it used to take an artist, say, like Pink Floyd, four years to do an album, or Led Zeppelin, two, three years to do an album. But it would come out, and even if it wasn't accepted by critics, by the time the fans have had it for a month or two months or three months... They've got a love it, so got it. Yeah, yeah, and they've still got it now because of that same reason. Yeah, exactly. They and, fell in love with it, they grew to love it. That's why artists like us are constantly getting burnt out because your single will be out for a day, mm-hmm. people have checked it out, and then you realise that people stop checking it out past day one. Yeah. But because they haven't invested money in the product... They don't care. They don't care, and yeah. again... Spotify is the same to Facebook and Instagram like because they're selling ads they've constantly got to be keeping you online so they're going to go oh well he hasn't listened to that today even though he listened to it three times on day yeah. one here's a new thing this is better this is Justin Bieber's new album like you're going to love this like there's a constant thing like they're constantly trying to push the new thing yeah. you're constantly trying to push against the new thing because you're trying to be the new thing mm. and that's why we're all getting burnt out and worn down and feeling like the world's against you and all you want to do is write a song and people listen to it the thing is like, I don't want to seem ungrateful because yeah, yeah. they're still at, giving you at three some minutes. point there was 200 and something people there mm. listening like, and I'm beyond grateful yeah, yeah. for that and I'm beyond yeah. grateful because I was on six what you got, what I've got to realise is yeah, yeah. I was on six monthly listeners before I'd put Grow mm. Together out two and a half months down the line I've got 60 yeah yeah I've times those people by 10 and they're yeah, sticking yeah. round yeah, it's yeah. not dropping now that's kind of hit the plateau yeah yeah of course like and I'm so grateful for those extra fifty four people. Are you not feeling now though that if that so they've stuck through the first two three months? It's three months. Three now. months. But are you not almost in your subconscious going? Shit, if I don't give them breathe in a month's time, like obviously you're lucky that you've got breathe to come out that you know that they're gonna love just yeah, as yeah. much as grow together. Like, if you didn't have breathe in the locker, would you be here con- like waking up in the morning going? I've got to give them another grow together in a month's time, otherwise that's going to go back down to six. Well, that's like, the pressure I've felt. Yeah. Like, I have felt that pressure, but then I was lucky to right breathe. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I would back breathe to the fucking hilt, like, mm. as many other people who have shown do. Because yeah, yeah. it is a big change. Yeah, it's yeah. not grow together. That's what, To be fair, on the flip side of that, the thing that does worry me is that I've got to produce another grow together. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to produce another grow together because... Grow together is grow together. Breathe in a similar vein, though. Like. It's just a heavier grow together, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. But, but I think if people like grow together, they'll like, well, like breathe. Like, that's it's not thing alone was a bit different. I can like. still target the same people. Yeah. Because it's actually probably closer to what they listen to with Catfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was the main people I, I aimed at was was Catfish fans. Yeah. And it worked for grow together. So if it worked for fucking grow together, which was a bit left field to Catfish. Yeah, yeah. Same kind of vibe. Yeah, again, yeah, of course. It was a lot yeah, softer. It was pop. It was pop up, but breathe. Yeah, he's catfish. Like it's that was my main influence for that song. I was I'd only just started listening. Yeah, man. So I don't know. It's just a weird one. And finally, Harry, mm-hmm. last question. Has there been a time in your life where, whether it's playing music or listening to music, that has got you out of a dark situation and kind of shifted your mentality to and maybe what, kick on the day you've woke up? What or, album or song? All the time, honestly, like countless like I need, I'd be lying if, if I if I said that music yeah hasn't numerous amount of times like listening to like a project from yeah. like an artist or whatever like literally like saved my life there's there's times where I felt like so low that like I've got no one to talk to at this point mm-hmm. I'm feeling like who, what, who are going to talk to you who is going to really even relate to that mm-hmm. but you listen to a project that's like I don't know, like twelve songs of pure relatable content. Yeah, yeah. Then it's almost like having like your best friend sat yeah, next yeah. to you and, and being able to speak about it. And it's at times where like you might not even want to talk about it because it's something that you don't really want to talk about, and you don't have to talk. There's no pressure to talk because you can just listen. Do you know what I mean? So there's many times I've had like that. I'd say mainly a lot with with like the nineteen seventy five music, hundred yeah. percent, like songs yeah, like yeah. me. And like, I mean, they were great. Yeah, falling I mean, for you and falling for you. We like, cried like babies cr- when we saw yeah. that live. <laughs> still, even hearing that song now, like it just like that will bring tears to my eyes because like it's just like that is like the only song I've ever felt that with on 1974. Like, I didn't listen to the first album. I kind of listened to the singles on the second album, but when I we listened to the third album, be my mistake. Come on, yeah, that no, was a song I've gone. Not only do I feel like I could have wrote that. Mm. 
but he's also done it better than I ever could have wrote exactly. it. So and you that is, it, it becomes level, my song that I will then go to. Yeah. Like you, you then you admire it, admire it to a whole new level. Yeah. You look at it and you think the same way his Tiny I Desk concert I, was so vulnerable. Mm. Like that Tiny Desk concert, like he's not giving this bravado. So like rude. I'm the front man of an indie indie band. He's gone. Yeah, I've got a, an acoustic guitar, and then he just gives you three songs the way that I imagine he wrote them before they got ramped up for it's the same with, pop and indie it's culture. The same with hundred and two. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all just it's all mm. raw and it's so honest, and that like every time you listen to him, like you can't you can't help but like get in your feels, and like yeah. also like while we're on the subject of it, like that's not a bad thing that like, we should promote that everybody should get in their feels. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? Hundred percent. That's so, why we're here. There was a meme like, for this, and it was like, people don't understand why you'd listen to sad music when you're feeling sad. But I was like, like if I'm having sure. a bad day, I don't want to listen to like Walking on Sunshine. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to hear Ryan Adams sing Breakdown. Because yeah. you want to relate. Because I'm going to go, not alone. Yeah, like, not alone, he knows. And that's why we do be sharing these yeah. stories, because it's like, everyone has these stories, but just different degrees. But that's why songwriters are songwriters, and that's why like, if you want to listen to Billy Ocean, like, like Love Really Hurts Without You, we listen to the lyrics, very sad song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that if you've just had a breakup, having an upbeat song but that's relatable, like Love Really Hurts Without You, or yeah. say, um, is it So What by Pink? And it's like, yeah. she just kicks out her husband. It's like, like pretty sad lyrics. But like, cause I can so appreciate upbeat. the upbeat nature of sad lyrics and like the juxtaposition like works. But at the same time, like, sometimes I just want to listen to a sad song. Like, yeah. I want to listen to Paolo Nettini's Last Request. Yeah. yeah. And they'll be like, slow it down. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I want to be there, like, crying into the album cover, like, like, you know. <laughs> well, should we wrap but, it up? Yeah, right? I think that's a great way to leave it. Like, yeah. Harry, like, you're our second guest. Um, but I genuinely don't think, like, you've, you've done more than I could ever ask a guest to do. Like, you've bared your soul, you've been relatable. You've been funny at times, obviously. Your kid shit in your phone. <laughs> um, but mate, like, thanks for giving your time. Thanks for giving your your heart. And that's a pleasure. I told, you, I told you at the start, I'd be hundred percent honest. That's, that's why I said too, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. But like, obviously, if it helps someone or it say. brings people to your music as well, because they I they find so. you relatable as so. well. Like, I hope that people can watch this and, and find like relatability in it, and I hope that they can. Um, They've learned more about me as well because yeah. there's, there's there's a lot to look at on the outside, but then there's a lot. Yeah, to, there's even more to see on the inside. Do you know what I mean? So, but, but boys, it's genuinely been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Pleasure. Perfect. Thank you very much for watching. These guys are just walking off while I'm doing the outro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share it with friends. To get as many people on this as possible, so, and suggest people that you'd like to get on as well, because we'll always try our hardest to get them on. Oh, yeah. And shut up, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wrapping it up. Cheers.